Hello, everyone. Welcome to Tehe TV. My name is Charles, and with me are my co-hosts, Damien and Stone. Say hello, guys. Good morning. Hey, can we talk 2.0? <laughs> oh, Stone boy. Behar here. Stone Behar, basically Joan Rivers 2.0. You know, can we talk? All right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, during, <laughs> during, the, during this episode of Tehe TV, we're going to be discussing very seasons one and two, and... The, like arguably the best Punisher movie, the 2004 Punisher movie. I have no choice but to agree with this here because this is what we did. This is this is what the poll, this is what the poll determined. This is what the hey. poll demands that yeah. I that, that that I give over, and I and and I bow to the to the to the prevailing winner of this poll. And it, you know, and, and I'm going to do a good job of this because see, this is the kind of professional that I am, people. So so watch it in action, and maybe some, and maybe some fat, uh, 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 maybe some. Okay, you know what? I'm I'm not going to go there. I'm, I'm, I'm just not going to. I'm, I'm not going to do it. It's too early in the morning. I'm you know. I'm, no, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not gonna. Maybe just move to say. Hmm, I wonder some, where he was going with that. You know, yeah. Maybe some people. Maybe some people. Some 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 people some you know if, if they if they are if they're able because you know we we just you know you know we hope you know look not everybody can be as spectacular on the spectrum as Charles here you know and everyone can be spectacular some people they 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 kind of go a little lower on the curve and we kind of have to understand that and we respect that and we acknowledge that so maybe some of those people who are out there that are lower on the curve as, as I suspected. I, I'm trying to tell you before, before things changed, I suspected that somebody was on the spectrum, way lower on the spectrum than our dear Charles here. You know what I'm saying? But you know, maybe he can still pick up these notes and learn. You know what I'm saying? And 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 understand how it is to be a professional in doing shows like this. You know what I'm saying? Watch and learn, you fat shit. Oh, sorry. Now I, I, I didn't. Don't don't hear that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> don't don't process that. Don't process that. You know what I'm saying? Just. Just listen wow. up, idiot. Just listen up, idiot. Okay, I'm, I'm just, I'm just saying. I'm just, wow. Okay, no, no, no. I'm just, <laughs> let's get the. With that being said, I guess. <laughs> are we, gonna, are we gonna start on the Punisher? I'm gonna go on the Punisher movie first. Am I? Should, should I be the first one to eat the shit because because well, mine lost? Well, his lost too though. His his right. shit fucking his shit fucking okay. His shit fucking lost too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, his. This guy's shit fucking loves too. See, I'm I'm doing a mirror shit, so it's kind of yeah. His shit oh, fucking loves. Oh, that's right. Because yeah. you, the two of you picked <laughs> different. The two of you guys picked uh, different Punisher movies. I don't remember who. Uh, which one of you picked the Dolph Lundgren movie? Uh, it was that me. Guy. It was me, and which should have fucking won. But you know. You... Okay, and then of course, Damien, you picked Punisher War Zone. I did. Okay. Uh, yeah. It's just um, yeah. So. Uh, Ha 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 ha! I win. <laughs> I yeah. Fuck win. this! I I quit. If he's yeah, gonna I, be like this, I quit. <laughs> I, I'm being petty. I know. I'm being petty. <laughs> but no, seriously though. I mean, I mean, look. I I will be willing to give Punisher War or the War Zone a chance because the service where I watched the 2004 Punisher movie also has Punisher War Zone, so I'll be able to watch that either when we're done here or maybe sometime this week. However, the Dolph Lundgren movie, I don't know where I'm going to be able to watch that. I'll have to look for it. Um, I don't know where that would be. I can't remember who made that or anything. Yeah, but uh, I, w I do kind of want to watch it. But it's just, I don't know. It's just something about the Thomas Jane Punisher movie just clicks with me. I just, I like the movie. I just, I, I really like it. And then again, I'm a fan of Thomas Jane. I like him in pretty much everything he does. I will say he's my favorite Punisher. It's just not my favorite Punisher movie. I thought I thought everybody was great in the movie. Yeah, even John Travolta, who is all over the place as far as his acting goes. Sometimes yes, yeah. he's great, often he's terrible. Yeah, like uh, that one movie he did where uh, the opening, the very first line of the movie is where he walks into a bookshop and he says... Hold on, can't talk, gotta poop. 
Wait, that sounds familiar. What was that? I can't remember the name of the movie, but he plays a mentally challenged guy with a weird haircut. Isn't that most movies? He's in? I don't know. Yeah. And by the way, by the way, sorry to cut in here on this, but by the way, Acorn TV, Amazon Prime Video, AMC Plus, Apple TV Plus, BritBox, Discovery Plus, Disney Plus, ESPN. ESPN, really? It's on Disney Plus? Yes. So the 2004 and Punisher Warzone are not on Disney Plus, but yet Dolph Lundgren's is on Disney Plus. Yeah, That's good. Weird. Yeah, yes, good. Yeah. Okay, so they they uh, they they like uh, Swedish biochemist or something. I, <laughs> I, I don't I don't fucking know. Because 2004, that was was that a Sony movie? Uh, I believe so. Maybe. Whereas Warzone was under the banner of Marvel Knights when they were trying to do like an adult kind of thing, and that didn't really go anywhere. But I figured that would have been Marvel Knights. Marvel I I remember that. Oh my god! Uh, what else did they do with Marvel Knights? Wasn't that? Didn't they also um, do Ghost Rider? I think it was Ghost Rider. There wasn't many, like because the movies didn't do well, so they kind of just no. gave up on that. Yeah, Which is sad, really. I mean, come on. Nick Cage as Ghost Rider. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take Nick Cage as anything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Renfield, Renfield fucking bombed. I enjoyed that movie. Oh, no, I liked it, too. I did. I liked it, too. But, um, no, back, back to Punisher. It's just, I don't know. It's just, I mean, when I was watching the movie from, like, start to, I started it last night. And I, it was like, but before I, I was talking to some friends while I was watching it, and before I even realized it, it was almost two in the morning. I was like, "All right, I need to go to bed before <laughs> before it's too late, and I don't wake up in time for this for this show." So I'll just like hope I wake up in time to finish it before we go live. And I did. I actually finished it like not too long before we got went live here, and while watching it. It just went right through. Like it, it was moving pretty quick. It's just it didn't feel like a long movie at all. It, it just it, it slows was, down at times, definitely. But it didn't feel like it slowed down at all. And did either of you watch the extended version or just the regular version? I think the I regular is about two hours. I extended is two twenty. I didn't realize there was an extended version. Neither did I until I grabbed it by accident. I think I probably watched the regular. I'm pretty sure. Pretty I looked sure. it up. There's, there's only so much added. To, like, most of the stuff in the extended edition that's added is pretty much him and his uh, his old partner, Weeks. Okay. Uh, is that uh, the guy that was at the opening scene at the dockyard? Uh, the guy that shoots um, him? No, it's his... Uh, his like, uh, the black guy that he was in the military with, he's, okay. I think he's only in the regular version, very small amount. Okay. To add a lot of him back. And you find out that he's the motherfucker who sold him out to uh, John Travolta. Really? Which I don't think was in the regular version. It wasn't. Because we don't actually find out who gave um, John Travolta's partner, the guy with the messed up goatee, um, like the file on Frank Castle, we never found out who gave him the file. It's uh, yeah, it's his old partner because uh, John Travolta finds out he's got like these big gambling debts and stuff like that. Uses that to his advantage to, you know, get information out of him. Mm. Well, I, yeah, I was I, not the, I, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say I had no idea that this was a thing, and who knows? I may go looking for it and watch it. I'll just say this. Um. And and because I've seen, trust me, because I am a overall, I am a Punisher fan. You know what I'm saying? Overall, I have, I fucking have the T-shirt, couple of T-shirts. As a matter of fact, um, I, I believe a little bit grittier than that one right there on the screen. But at any rate, you know what I'm saying? Um, the thing is, I always felt like that the 1989 version was like my favorite because of the fucking just the grittiness and the darkness and the despair of it. But I will fucking say that just 
in my remembrance of you know what I'm saying of Thomas Jane in the Punisher they did a little bit more to to really to really take you to really sell you on the roller coaster ride down into the despair because when 1989 Dolph Lundgren's Punisher starts he's already in the fucking gutter he's already fucking like he's living in the sewers eyes drawn no sleep he's already he's already made his decisions and he's he's already doing his shit you know what I'm saying? So by that time, you get a little bit of a flash on what the fuck it was that fucked him over, that turned him into that. You know what I'm saying? But it, they really kind of gave a little bit more of that, you know, of that storytelling to lead him into the despair. And they really gave a little bit more on it, more than his wife and his kids, family. You know what I'm saying? This whole gathering that was happening, they just they just went in and just and just fucking just eradicated on that. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, so that was definitely more into that and it definitely to see where he ended up it, it, he definitely they definitely wanted to give i felt like they wanted to give i felt like when i thought back on it they gave more respect you know what i'm saying to it than what i gave it credit for you know what i'm saying that it was just you know just the way that it's kind of put it i mean the time frame just the timeline and the time frame before i guess i just felt like it was too glossy but when i when i thought there were certain moments through that movie that I just felt like was just really just, you know, you know what I'm saying? I, I felt like they really kind of gave a little something. The people that he connected with were just a different type. You know what I'm saying? It was just, it, it was, it was the same. I started to realize, damn, okay, it was, yeah, it's a, it was a glossier, bigger budget movie, but there still was a different, there still was the same vibe that was there that I felt like, even with his connection with that guy that, that seemed like a, that seemed like homeless Albert Einstein or whatever, you know what I'm saying? It was just like in, in the 1989, you know what I'm saying, Punisher, it just seemed like he connected with these weird people, you know what I'm saying, and, and, so, and some female who was weirdly hot and somehow just couldn't seem to get a break for herself. I mean, like, God damn, that's Rebecca Romaine Stamos, Rebecca Romaine. I'm like, God damn, like, how in the fuck would she ever live in a fucking place like that? I mean, it just seems impossible that a girl like that would ever live. But anyway, you know, we, 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 that's why we got to love the movies. That's why we got to love the fucking movies. I'm just saying. And I, and I think what's funny is that I think people got kind of sick of that, which I think was kind of like a funny thing that kind of like is, is a weird connection from this movie to Barry, what we're going to be talking about later on. It's kind of a thing that I just read that I saw in, in, a, in one episode that kind of makes me feel like, wow, they're really doing this more and more now because I guess they're sick of that scenario of how in the hell does a woman like Rebecca remain Stamos end up in a place like that, living with the, you know, being friends with those guys. You know what I'm saying? And, and just reality, that just that just wouldn't take place. I mean, am, am I am I just being over the top? I mean, or, or do you agree with that? I when I first saw the movie, I thought that was a little like I kind of like tilt my head and go like, really? I mean, like a woman that attractive being friends with those guys, like. I mean, yeah, like, I can see those guys living in the same place, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. But, I don't, her, I, but her living there? I mean, go on. I, I don't know. It's just, like, also, it's, I don't know. It's just, but but my suspension my suspension of disbelief was willing to accept it. Of course, but, I mean, she could, but, but, you, but you realize she could easily, she could have easily hooked her way out of that place. Easily into a damn into a damn condo without a problem. Oh, in like, in like oh, yeah. three days. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Definitely. <laughs> definitely. But I don't know. I mean, but the thing is, is that I, th I even though their their friendship was a little unbelievable, I also did find their friendship a little endearing. Yes, absolutely. It, they, it was yeah. played very naturally. Yeah, I mean, it was I, it was very it was very Snow White and Seven Dwarfs type of feel. I mean, I, I, abso yeah. I mean, absolutely <laughs> on that, you know. Yeah. yeah, the other five died from black mold, <laughs> so she's just left with those two guys. Yeah, yeah, it's just I don't know. And, and to be honest, the the guy with the piercings, I can't remember his name. When we'll just, he was, we'll just call we'll just call that dwarf depressed. Um, no, Heroin no, I, shaggy. I, 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 rem I remember his name. His name was Dave. Um, when he was being tortured by a uh, fucked up goatee dude, um, that that scene was a little rough, but also at the same time, I liked that scene because he refused to talk and reveal Frank's location and 
when Frank got out of like the bunker and was like asking him like why why did you stand up for me like why didn't you talk and Dave was like you're one of us you're family and all that I was like holy shit I mean I, I like that part that's like one of my favorite moments of the entire movie but I got but I got to admit a morbid part of me was expecting the rest of them to be like one of us one of us oh, I, I'm just, oh, I'm just, I'm just you know. <laughs> Just, just, I'm also. Know. I was also trying to figure out what those guys like. I don't think they ever gave any indication as to how they support themselves. They didn't ever seem to do anything. They were just always around. Like we know she worked in the diner, but the but fuck I mean, were those guys up to? Well, I mean, we have we have the guy who likes to cook and also listen to opera. So, I mean, but they, it wasn't like they were. It wasn't like they were living in the palatial estates, man. I mean, no, true. It's, it's very possible that. Maybe they're all living there for free. It's just this abandoned fucking apartment building. Because there seemed to be nothing around it. And okay, you, you so could almost see it being like, they don't see people around there very often. So they're just like, hey, here's this guy with his muscle car. Fuck it, let him in. Or maybe so, just, so, um, or maybe it's a, maybe it's an uneasy arrangement with the with, with the landlord or whatever. That, hey, if you don't say much, I won't say much. You know what I'm saying? We, You know, hey, you know. You don't pay so much rent, you know what I'm saying? Maybe we don't, you know, paint the walls or, you know, that is best though. Just ignore that, you know what I'm saying? Or maybe wear a mask. Well, you know, I, I, when, he, when he was fighting the freaking Russian and he threw the grenade, the Russian hit the grenade with a, with oh, that a piece was... of, with a piece of re rebar <laughs> like a freaking baseball. That was the funniest thing. He fucking pitches it out, instantly just sent right back. And, oh, shit. He dives into the bathtub. I love that much much like his car, he's there was this whole sequence where he sets that bathroom up. Same with the car, there's a whole sequence where he, he's getting it ready, putting in all the like the uh, shutters on the windows and stuff. Yeah. And then it's just gone in a second. All that planning is just useless basically. Yeah, yeah. You, you know what though? The car did save him, but it, it got fucked up like immediately. Oh, yeah, because of the guy with the guitar. Yeah, because yeah, when he was shooting at him, he pulled down the thing, and that he probably would have been killed right there. But yeah. otherwise, I was disappointed that that got written out so early. Oh, yeah. I was like, I was like that car is cool. And then I was like, yeah, that, that's his Batmobile. <laughs> I was like, damn it, what, not the car. Not the <laughs> fucking car. I got, I got to say, I got to say, it's weird. It's like... It's like Punisher 2004 and Punisher 1989 are like this yin and yang of variant versions of the same content because they seem to have this weird mixture of like hokey moments and you know saying awesome moments that give it that that give one edge over the other. Like I have to say, the edge that that 2004 has over 1989 is that. In 1989, you felt like when old boy roped, you know what I'm saying? When the when the when the basically crime boss roped him into going on a rescue mission, you know what I'm saying, for his son and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? You got you got the sense of you got the sense that maybe he was gonna he was trying to do the right thing for the kids, and that he wasn't maybe gonna try, you know what I'm saying? To you know he wasn't gonna try to deal with old boy at that point. You know what I'm saying? You know, so maybe another time or whatever, but you know, but with 2004, it was never a sense that he was not going to do that guy in. You know what I'm saying? And, oh no. And that's what, and, and that's what for me when I when I really review back on it gave gave it the fucking edge. It was never a situation where he was never not going to figure out a way to to do this guy in completely. You know what I'm saying? So that definitely, you know, what I'm saying gives it a different. Gives it a different cut in the edge, but there were certain moments. It like when I was a kid, when I, when I was younger, and I first saw The Punisher in two thousand four, it seemed kind of cool as shit to me. But then when I look back on it, it's kind of like, mm. like that guy, like that guy coming into the damn diner or whatever, and then playing that song playing for him that he that he wrote for him. Yeah, I'm gonna play it at your funeral. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And then he and then he bounces you're out. Try, and you trying to like, kill me or are you trying to fuck me? What are you doing? Like. <laughs> I'm gonna play it at yeah. your funeral, and then he, he boxes up, and and then, and then basically bounces out. It was just like, okay, you know what I'm saying? It was just kind of, 
It just it was just kind of I, I just but but then there were like of course because it was the eighties there's plenty of hokey moments plenty of hokey moments in the Punisher in nineteen eighty nine but probably unintentional too maybe maybe yeah. but it's a sign of the times you yeah know, but what, that, what can that, you do? that that scene with the guitar player in the diner when he shows up and starts playing that song that is the only scene in the entire movie that I did not like. That is the only moment. Yeah, I wasn't a huge fan of that. I, I wasn't the biggest fan. It was, it was kind of all right, but I wasn't the biggest fan of uh, when they're all cooking together. The guy's pretending to do opera, you know, like he's faking it with the spoon. I was like, that just seemed a little goofy, but it was contrasted with this brutal fight that's going on outside. So that, that part I actually did like. I thought that I thought that was that was done really well. I I, I like that scene because on one on one sequence we have Frank fighting the Russian, and then on the other sequence we have the 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 big man, and we have the piercing dude, and we have Rebecca Romain all dancing and singing. To opera, and I thought just like they were complimenting each other, and that's what it felt like to me. Yeah, that, that's what I mean. That was a nice contrast, and they they just had the opera blaring so loud that they had no idea this. Like I, I think they slightly noticed when the grenade went off, but then just kind of like eh, and just kept going on no, about no, their when business. The, when the grenade went off, and they were like, "Whoa, what was that?" I said, "Like, did you hear that?" And then they went right back to dancing, and I'm yeah. like, <laughs> <laughs> I thought that I, I was laughing at that. Yeah, I thought that was well, funny. Well, you gotta mean you, you gotta understand that they're living down on Skid Row. <laughs> yeah. Sorry and about then, my yeah, pitch they, there. <laughs> Sorry about my pitch there. I'm working on. I'm trying to drink the tea here. I'm working on it, man. <laughs> my throat. Gotta wake little, that voice up. My throat's been a little. Stri- it's been a little stripped lately. You know what I'm saying? Not strep throat. But I'm just saying, just like. <laughs> You know, rip the shreds. But you know, you know what I mean. Um, you know, little shop of horrors, down on Skid Row. You gotta understand. You know, bombings happen. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, no, there was another thing that I thought was a little weird about this movie. Um, right at right after his family was uh, right after his family was murdered and everything. He goes back to the scene of the massacre, and he picks up a, a black T-shirt, and he open he like extends the T-shirt, and in the in like the the, the graphic on the shirt is the Punisher skull. And I'm yeah, like, I thought I didn't uh, like that. Yeah, I was like, all right, that's a little too on the nose, there, buddy. It's just like, I mean, it's like, come on, man. It's like for one, who at that fucking gathering was wearing that? Exactly. Yeah, and two, that sucks. It's some, it's something he's gonna make himself. He doesn't just pick it up. Yeah, exactly. It's just that felt weird. I mean, even in the Netflix Punisher show, Frank Castle there made the logo himself. He didn't. Yeah, find it was on. It. Uh, what did he? It was on Body Armor initially, right? Or maybe yeah, throughout it, the it, whole it, thing. It was on Body Armor, but uh, uh, like he made it himself. He didn't find it on a shirt. On some street corner. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, yeah, it's cool. I'll, I'll go watch this and wear it. It's like, oh, this little this will look badass when I'm killing people. <laughs> <laughs> Belong to one of my dead cousins or uncles or whatever, but yeah, fuck it. It's, just, it's like seriously. It's just, I mean, I, actually, I guess on that level, I could understand it. It's kind of like he's, but still stupid. But I don't know. It would make sense if he was wearing this shirt that belonged to like somebody close to him in his family. Like if it belonged to his father, if it belonged yeah. to his son or something. If it belonged to that, he was where he would be wearing it as sort of like a reminder of what he lost. I mean, but no, this is a shirt that he picked up that was half buried in the sand on some beach. Yeah, like it, it washed up from somewhere. God knows where. Yeah. Because if it was from one of the people who was killed, they would have still been wearing it, you would imagine. Yeah, exactly. So well, they would have been hauled off with it. So, so I, I, I just thought it, I just thought it was too on the nose. I did. It's yeah. Just, yeah. I don't know why that that's it's a very odd choice. 
Yeah, it was a very odd choice. Considering you could just have like a three second flash of him spray painting it on a shirt. Yeah, exactly. Would have been probably cheaper to shoot. He, they did technically do that with the body armor at the end of the movie. When he, yeah, they did. When he, when he went to the hotel and he was uh, basically killing the family of Howard Sanks. I, I think I nope. just butchered his name. Um, wait, what did you say? I said Howard Sanks? Saint. Saint. Yeah, Saint. Uh, that was one thing at the very end. I, I even when I first saw it, I was like, "That's cheesy," but it's still fucking cool. When he sets fire to all the cars, and it yeah, that 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 makes was, the skull. Yeah, it, that that part I thought was like, "Yeah, that's a bit much, buddy. Come on." It's like, how long did it take him to fucking you know figure that out? I don't. He's know. probably there for like two or three hours, being like, "Yeah, okay, this car, this I car plant." Under this cup. Yeah, that 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 was a bit much. Like, and first off, who, the only people that are going to see that are from aerial view. <laughs> exactly. Anyone looking at it from the ground level, or even a couple stories up, is just like, okay, it's just a bunch of cars on fire. Exactly. Yeah. So it's yeah, I like it, but it's still it's kind of kind of dumb. Yeah, it is. But I don't know. I mean, and then of course, there's no sure way that he that that, that was going to kill Howard Sanks when Saints when you could just easily, you know, bang. Exactly. Yeah, you could just shoot him in the head right then and there. I think what 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 Frank Castle did right there is a little thing that I like to call overkill. <laughs> oh, it was definitely overkill. Yeah. <laughs> And again, like as you said, it's no guarantee it's going to kill him. He could turn up as an angry burn victim a couple of weeks later, and then you got to yeah. deal with him again. Yeah, exactly. It's like, oh, we'll see John Travolta come back in Punisher Two: The Punishing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I I liked how this movie would. It, it's at times felt like an action movie from like the seventies. Like it's yeah. kind of had that vibe to it at times. Yeah, I did get that feeling, and I even got that feeling from the fucking music, like the score yeah. of the movie. Like there were scenes in the score where the music kind of felt out of place, but not in a bad way. It felt out of place because it felt like it was a little over the top. Like um, the music kind of felt like it was. Um, Over intensifying the moment, I guess you could say, mm. is the best way I could describe it. Like uh, the scene where Howard was sitting, or not sitting, he was leaning up against his balcony, and his wife shows up and she's wearing a red dress. She takes off the red dress. You see her in lingerie. They get close to each other. They're kissing, they're being intimate, and then it fades to black. Which I thought was a little weird because this movie came out where it's like, I mean, I mean, I mean, we're not prudes here. Yeah, not <laughs> but look, man, the 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 craziest Rebecca Rebecca Romain has ever gotten is basically if we talk if we're still talking about if we're still talking about the Punisher two thousand four, correct? Yeah. Yes. And we're talking about that scene. I mean, the, the net. I mean, look, the the most risque she's gotten is, you know, what I'm saying, is basically dressing. You know, so it's basically doing the mystique. You know, what I'm saying thing at one point in in the X Men. You know, what I'm saying series. I mean, that's about as that's about as risque as it's gotten with her, man. I mean, the, the, despite despite all the well wishes, you know, what I'm saying. I mean, and you know, so I mean, maybe they just did it for a little bit more focus on the actual story than the salaciousness of the love scene. Who knows, man. Like well, I said, my whole point of br even bringing that up is not even the love scene itself. It's the fact of the music playing at the moment is that uh, the music itself playing during that scene felt like it was over intensifying the moment. Like, uh, uh, how, how, how do I how do I describe it? I'm, I'm not musically inclined. No I'm problem. Not. It's but, fine. But um, what what are the instruments that were being used? Um, okay, it, it was um, the the instruments that were being used were trying to be um, 
Oh, uh, well, crap. What is the word I'm trying to use? Um, Re refresh, refresh my memory. What were the instruments being used in that scene? Because I just refresh my memory on that. Um, it, I, I, I believe they were uh, some kind of a horn type instrument. Um, look, I, I'm not, I'm not like I failed music class in school. I failed it. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. They're like, what is this? Holding up a guitar and you're like, okay. flute. <laughs> no, oh no, I, I, I know what a clarinet is, and I learned how to, I learned how to use the clarinet. So. I thought we got that lowbrow comedy out of here. You know what I'm saying, Damien? That that lowbrow, you know what I'm saying, picker nosery type of shit there. You know what I'm saying? Like, it is you your know. fault for expecting better from me. It's not oh, my no. fault. I definitely. <laughs> I, I had comparisons to make, pal. You, 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 you had a far, you know what I'm saying? You had a far fall into a commode, pal. You know what I'm saying? I felt like you was a far fall away from that. <laughs> I, I, no. saw, I well, saw the commode. I saw the, because what I'm saying, I saw the commode. <laughs> Whatever instruments that were being used in that mo in that moment were being used a lot throughout the entire movie, and they were always being used whenever Howard and his crime syndicate were in the scenes. They were always those instruments were always being used when they were involved in the sequence, and I just whenever they showed up, I knew those instruments were going to be used. And yeah, it's just they it's just they over intensified the moment is the I guess is the best the best way to describe it. And just sort of like just settle down a bit. You don't need to just, just simmer down. Yeah. I mean but I mean but isn't I mean isn't sexual tension in the time of great well, violence and danger, you know what I'm saying? I'm not I'm not Intense. just I'm, I'm, I'm not just... just talking about the love scene between Howard and his wife at that moment. I'm talking about that those instruments being used every single time the saints were ever involved in a sequence. It's just like it over intensified the scene regardless of what the scene was. Yeah, it's just I don't know, it just it just it just seemed like like huh, like really was that necessary? But I mean Like, uh, here's another example. Uh, at uh, Howard's son's funeral, and the goatee guy walks up to the limo, hands Howard the file, and Howard says, okay, I want you to make him suffer, yada, yada, yada. And then the camera focuses on Howard's wife, and she lifts up her head and says, kill, basically says to kill his family. The instruments show up again. It's just, yeah. <laughs> Sounds like a crime's being committed. And wouldn't you know it, those fucking instruments are yeah. there too. <laughs> yes, yes, I know. I'm, I'm focusing a lot on these instruments, so how about we just move on? Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. No, it's not, it's not a problem, man. It's not, it's not the, a problem. These, these instruments have committed a crime against humanity. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God, I'm such a terrible person. No, it's, it's no problem, man. You know, it's, it's no problem, pal. You're, you're fine. You're fine. Yeah. <laughs> you know the horn. Look, 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 I'll make it feel a little bit better. Okay, well, well, I'll go bottom basement for you. You know what the horn said to the musician? <laughs> Blow me. <laughs> Blow me. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> and, uh, as I was saying before, uh, in the extended version, you find out his partner is the one who sold him out. Yeah. And there's uh, a couple sort of scenes leading up to Frank figuring it out where he's, you know, he's getting little pieces from the guy that he doesn't quite put together until a certain point. But then once he figures it out, there's a scene where he goes to his apartment and pretends he's sort of like he's pointing a gun at him and stuff, then puts the gun down. Sort of, they, you know, they're having a bit of a conversation. He's not quite revealing that he knows, or at least he thinks he knows. Then his partner picks up the gun, you know, the old, ah, there's no bullets in it, stupid, because he pulls the trigger a few times, and then Frank drops the bullets on the floor. 
that's sort of when he completely figures out he was the guy who sold his family out. Then he gives him one bullet to kill himself with. And the guy's just the whole time, he's just like, please, just kill me. And he's like, no, you got to do this. I thought that was a cool scene. I, I, could, I think maybe it was too dark or something for the movie. I, I don't really know why that whole subplot got left out. Because it's kind of important. It is, it is. Well, I mean, it's not, but it is. Well, I mean, uh, Frank's family was wiped out because of Frank's partner. Yeah. And, I mean, he's ba Frank is basically telling him to kill himself. As Kevin that, Hart does on Twitter mo a lot of times, you know. Okay, I don't understand the context of that, but... Uh, he tells people kill themselves. Seriously? And he's still on Twitter? <laughs> yes. How? <laughs> he's Kevin Hart. He's a comedian. He's a little... He's a little guy with a big smile. I, I, I don't, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? I mean, and and, and a mousy voice. I, I just don't, I don't get it. You know what I'm saying? But I mean, he he can say stuff like that, and then, you know. Well, I mean, Twitter is controlled by Elon Musk now, and we all know, like, he doesn't really give a shit. He likes little. Oh, 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 oh I'm sorry. I thought you were saying. I thought you were gonna say he likes little black guys. Okay, I'm sorry. I wasn't my, going my, to say that. I was I, going to say that Elon Musk just doesn't give a shit. Oh, okay, that that sound that sounds a little cooler than he likes little black guys. You know what I'm saying? Just you know, he kind of he, he kind of sounds like he kind of sounds like he wants his own little he wants his own little Webster or or he wants his own little Webster or or Gary Coleman or or, or whatever. You know what I'm saying? So you know, I haven't thought about Gary Coleman in a long time. You don't see I mean, you don't look at Kevin Hart and think about Gary Coleman at least once every once in a while. I'm sorry. Okay, all right, all right, all right. Yeah. I'm gonna. I'm going to uh, like look. I mean, I mean Gary, Gary. That Cole, motherfucker. I mean, do you remember that motherfucker just did, um, different strokes, <clears throat> where he said the motherfucker's lapping everything. All right, all right. Gary Coleman may be shorter than Kevin Hart, but he is a much bigger man than, no, than Kevin Hart. Not by much, though. <laughs> I have more respect for Gary Coleman than I do Kevin Hart. I, I would say not by much. Neither way, yes, he's not much. He's not much bigger than Gary Coleman, and yes, Gary Coleman is a bigger man in character, but not by much. <laughs> yeah, not by much, because he really, he really wowed out on that woman that that he wouldn't give, he wouldn't, you know, what I'm saying that was, I don't know, he he should be working in security if his trigger is people asking him to say his catchphrase. You know what I'm saying? I, you know, you know that that's the one thing, like I said, that, that takes away a lot of his character because he, you know, what I'm saying, he fought a woman, he fought a woman. Now, see, now, now, I'm see, I don't put it the same way as a, a normal size guy. I hate. Look, I'm sorry. We we got to do this, okay? Look, <laughs> this is do happening. This. I, yeah, I'm no, I'm no Randy <laughs> Newman. Short people got every reason to live, okay? But look, if 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 you're a little guy fighting a bigger woman, you know what I'm saying, a normal sized woman. I'm just like, yo, it, it, it's a little bit of a, a handicap going on. I don't mean, you know what I mean. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just, You're trying to yeah. say it's okay because they're equally balanced. In a way, yeah. <laughs> wow. D <laughs> Charles, what the hell, man? <laughs> Charles, what the hell? <laughs> <It's> <laughs> what the <laughs> Did I just walk into the moral majority of here? I mean, what the hell is that? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> you have been judged. <laughs> I mean, come on, man! Wow, I mean, I really didn't think it was. I really didn't take a sharp reaction to that. As that, I mean, whew. jeez. <laughs> Well, I'm sorry. I, don't, I I don't I don't remember this whole thing of Gary Coleman fighting a woman. I don't remember this. I, yes. I vaguely do. Yeah, yeah, I mean, he was working security at, at a I believe it was at a shoe store. Yeah. I believe I think so, and, and which is already ever, ridiculous. Yes, <laughs> of course, but you know, it's like really, I, I, I have to worry short, about that guy if I'm going to steal some shoes. Super short guy doing security. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, but then you realize it's, 
And then like you realize, God, that can't be like what you talk about Willis. And it is what you talk about Willis. And it, oh my God. And then it's like she wants to get him to say exactly that. What you talking about, Willis? And he's not trying to do that shit. You know what I'm saying? It's not his thing anymore. And then she starts to get a little upset and whatnot. You know what I'm saying? And and acting like, you know, how in the hell I'm a fan, blah, blah, blah. And you know what I'm saying? They just start going back and forth. And then that's when the physicalities occur. <laughs> so he basically gets into a fight with a woman because she gets mad at him because he won't tell her what you talk about Willis. That's correct. It doesn't sound like real life, does it? No, it really <laughs> doesn't. <laughs> I'm not going to make that type of shit up, folks. We're on I mean, I'm, I'm, we're on live. We're oh, no, on live like, I, I know it. I know it happened, but it doesn't sound real. Okay, yeah, <laughs> trust off, me. The woman should have respected his wishes and just, just left him alone. And second, he shouldn't have attacked her and should have just moved the fuck on. I mean, but do you realize how much money was stolen from him off of that shit? She sued him? No, 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 no. How much money was stolen from, you know what I'm saying, from Gary Coleman by his parents off of, you know, off of that show and him saying that catchphrase is what I mean. He, 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 he technically made the money, but it was stolen by his parents, so... That's why he was, hence why he's working as security at a shoe store. You know what I'm saying? I'm just, I'm just oh, saying. Oh, fuck. You know. Oh, mm. damn it. Like, it's not surprising, but damn, does that suck. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, you know, not, not so, so when you realize that, um, that, yeah, it, it sounds funny in a theme song for friends, but yeah, when it hasn't been your day, your week, your month, or even a few years, you don't want to fucking say what you're talking about, Willis. Yeah, because that's to be a constant <laughs> reminder of the time when your parents screwed you out of millions. That's it. It's just it's it's connected. You can't separate that. So yeah. Fuck, man. God damn, that sucks. And didn't he fucking? It was it was him, right? That had that really tragic, shitty death, where he like fell and fucking hit his head or something. I don't. I know. I know he's dead, but I don't remember. I don't remember what the cause of death was. Or am I thinking? Or am, I, am I thinking of a, a different midget? Maybe I'm thinking of the little uh, guy from Fantasy <laughs> Island. I can't remember. All little people look the same to me. I disavow what I just said. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> seriously, that I'm, I'm not sure. If I, it's very possible. I'm getting confused. Uh, See. See, don't Jim Jones me up here. Do not Jim <laughs> Jones me up here. I'm not. I am not doing this. Okay, <laughs> like I don't know what the hell. I don't know. Okay, let me see. Uh, see, what folks, that guy said that guy that wasn't me. Either. He's over there somewhere. I was just moving my mouth at the same time. We're living in the mirror sphere here. I, I need. I need to fucking just get get my shit that's right for me right now because see, I, I just can't fucking. Ah. Okay. Anyway. The you know what I'm saying the, the 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 big bear guy you know what I'm saying beside me you know what I'm saying <laughs> with the Australian accent you know what I'm saying that that's that's the well that's the guy that he's saying these weird Randy Newman type things you know what I'm saying not me because I, I I you know they don't look all the same you, you know got a friend saying? in me <laughs> oh god you got a friend in me yeah <laughs> yes <laughs> look, wait, look, look what are you doing to Charles what what is happening to Charles Charles are you okay. <laughs> You, Charles you is look, doing research. You look in yeah. shock right now. Yeah, I am. I'm re. I'm reading the actual death of uh, like of Gary Coleman, trying to find out. Apparently, he fell down the stairs at his home uh, after having a seizure. So I was right. Yeah. Wow. yeah. That's right. No, now I'm thinking about it. I think was it Jose Villachez. The the little guy from Fantasy Island, I think he shot himself. Yeah. And there was like there was like this really fucking <laughs> it sounds bad to say, tragically hilarious nine one one call. <laughs> tragically okay. hilarious. Wow. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. 
I'll, I mean, Bear, Barry has got you on one, huh, man? Uh, uh, <laughs> Jesus I'm, Christ. I'm going to go to hell for saying this, but I... Oh, crap. You have, you have now piqued my interest. <laughs> oh, my God. I mean, what the hell, man? And, and so, yeah. Like, why, why is it tragically hilarious? Because <laughs> of the voice, basically. Oh, man. <laughs> I know. It's terrible. Oh, man. Wait a second. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm going to hell. All right. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't, don't worry. I'll, I'll be there long before you. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. I don't even believe in hell, and I'm going to hell. So, holy, uh, me neither. But <laughs> holy, holy shit. What kind of, oh, my, what kind of idiot was Vern Troyer? Holy shit. What, 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 did he, what did he do? They said, he said he killed himself. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping, did they divorce? I, thought, I, the f- I know I know that Vern Troyer did kill himself, but I thought it was just like alcohol poisoning is what, what the, what the uh, cause of death was. But he was with Brittany Powell for the longest goddamn time. Jeez, hold up. Okay, so if you don't know, so if you guys are confused by who in the hell is Brittany Powell and why would I call Vern Troy a stupid, peaceful journey, Vern Troy, by the way, I don't mean to dump on you like that, but I just I just seen the girl that you were, that your little ass was with at one point, and I just got to say. The name's familiar, I'm just not, can't place it. Yeah, let me, let me help you out here. Let me help you out. Let's get down here to it. So, Vern Troyer was with that woman. Damn, little mug was doing well for himself. Yeah, so why in the hell did she leave him? That had to be the reason she must have left his ass. Like, that must have, he must have wigged out on that. Like, goddamn, how can I go on? I can see the problem. If that was the case, I'm just saying. But if he, but if they were together and he did that, like, whoa, man, what the hell are you doing? What in the hell were you doing, bro? Um. Last time I recall seeing him in anything was, I think he was really wasted on some reality show. Oh, one of my favorite reality shows ever, The Surreal Life. Yes. The yep. Surreal Life. The Surreal Life. Yes, that was one of the Which, best shows ever. And, oh my and, God. And, the, and you know the reason why that, you know what I'm saying, that the show didn't really work this second go around, like, like, like really, really? It's because the people wasn't really trying to be invested in the fact that their careers, you know what I'm saying, were shit. You know what I'm saying? Some were, some weren't. And and, and the only way... Really, there there was some people trying to pretend that they still had some shit going? Yeah, yeah. (laughs) It's like, do you understand what you're doing right now? Yeah, yeah, and they they just couldn't, they, they couldn't figure, they couldn't really figure it out. You know what I'm saying? Some people would just, you know, they couldn't fucking... And, and and they thought they were playing like it, it was like playing a game of Big Brother or something like like, like they were like they were on Big Brother and not on the surreal life like like people understand see see it's just a certain thing that like people understood like people like myself understood what the surreal life represented it represented a clear understanding let me just go ahead and do this while we're here you know what I'm saying but look, it was it represented a clear understanding that your career is not where it used to be. Either it's not where it used to be, it didn't quite it, it, it didn't quite go as far as you thought it could have went, or it really never got started for you the way you thought it, you know what I'm saying, the way you thought it was. So now you're trying to figure it out, you know what I'm saying, and everything like that. And so, and they're trying to, and the show was going to help you, was going to help those people figure it out and try to figure out what was their pathway back to relevancy. You know what I'm saying, that was supposed to be the idea. And it's like... But with the second go round, it's like some people understood that, and then you had some others that still felt like people were on this show to see them, just to see them, you know. And 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 it was about this whole, and it was still about their celebrity working in that, you know, in that roundabout way, which is so, which is so weird to think about, you know. So, 
Instead of being like, oh, people are here to watch my continued downfall, which is more often than not what it is. It's very rare that reality TV isn't one of the last stops in a career when you've been a big celebrity. But see, that, but see that's where... Like, the Osbournes is one of the examples I can think of where that wasn't. Like, Ozzy continued to have a... Still continues to have a very successful music career. But see, the thing is, with the surreal life and with the real world... It was meant to be something different. Reality shows were meant to be something different. When the real world first came out, it was mainly about, it was mainly about, yeah, people were coming into a house. Like the the base premise was, again, was real. That's why they called it the real world. The base premise of it was real. Seven strangers brought into a house, lived with each other, and all that. You know what I'm saying? All that. I used to. I mean. Of course, I grew up fucking watching the real world, so I, I could probably still recite the damn, the, the damn, the damn show shit if I try hard enough. But anyway, <laughs> but any fucking way, it's just like that was the truth. But then, but then the thing that also became true is that they were not, is that they were not trying to bullshit about the fact that people had other goals. People were trying to be comedians. People were trying to be singers. People were trying to be artists. People were trying to be actors and whatnot. It, it, it was never a thing where these reality show people that you don't know, they were still trying to be something, you know what I'm saying, in the fucking, in, in, in the fucking industry or whatever, you know what I'm saying? So it wasn't like this thing that was sort of like, okay, these are just people and they're just living a regular life. They're going to live a regular life. And yeah, but yeah, but no. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing this because I'm doing this because I want to be seen and I want to, and I want to, I want to tell this that it can spark something else that's, that's going on. That was part of the confessional. That was part of of, of what their story was. So it, it it basically brought again more realness to the story, and the surreal life was sort of like that. Was sort of like that other side of that. That some people who may have tried to spark things on a reality show and didn't go well. You know what I'm saying? Maybe it it kind it, it kind of caught a little bit of wind. But then it kind of it kind of lost it, it kind of lost power momentum at that point, and then it even was able to grab some you know what I'm saying legendary people who want to try to maybe bring uh, an up you know what I'm saying an upswing to their you know what I'm saying to their career and their relevancy. So they all and they all come in understanding what was position that they're in, and they try to move forward based on that position. And it's just like when you have people who are still acting like we have we have Dennis Rodman still acting like you know what I'm saying. Still acting like he is the preeminent guy as far as any fucking thing. It's just fucking hilarious. You know what I'm saying? Now, there are basketball purists that will always speak of Dennis Rodman as a fucking legend, Hall of Famer. You know what I'm saying? Champion in every team that he fucking played for, by the way. Yes, this is, you know what I'm saying? This is H. Will or Stone, whatever you want to fucking call, yay effing sports little shameless plug fit me people but bottom line while, while i was fucking doing this bullshit why not but anyway i'm just saying like they're, they're, they're basketball peers that will honor that will always honor dennis rodman for the legend that he is in that sport but there there's gonna be plenty more people over this last 20 or so years that are gonna look at him as the weirdo drug addict you know what i'm saying like yeah the he do a lot of coke the dude did he fuck a lot of females that we wanted to have fucked you know so namely carmen electra you know what I'm saying? Like I, I would definitely would have. That's this one. What a jerk! <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Get into bank, common Electra. Not fair. Ooh, kudos. <laughs> I mean, kudos to that chap. Kudos. Oh yeah. <laughs> God bless. <laughs> Cheers to that chap. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> you know, it's like to be in his shoes for that moment. Yeah. <laughs> not not much more. Not much more. But it means maybe that moment. But not much more. You know what I'm saying? Just, you know. <laughs> And also, oddly, friends with North Korean dictators. Yeah, see, and see, and all that stuff seems great, but it just seems, but then it seems more like Dennis Rodman weird. And then you realize, and then you realize, holy shit, you know what I'm saying? Weird ass Dennis Rodman is friends with this, you know, same friends with this Korean dictator, which means that Korean dictator is really fucking weird too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And he and, and, and he runs, you know what I'm saying? And he runs a fucking country that boasts, you know what I'm saying? That boasts of having nuclear capabilities. You know what I'm saying? Like you just realize how, you know what I'm saying? How how very unsettling and 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 disorienting that all is. You know what I'm saying? I'm just just being honest. I'm just being honest. Maybe maybe just, maybe, maybe it's me being too woke, but I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just so fucking every, saying. So we're seeing an episode of the Vice HBO series. I think it was in the first or second season. Must have been because I think I stopped watching after that somewhere there. But he was like their sort of avenue into North Korea. 
just because of his relationship with and like he got them in it was fucking oh, like what I could, hell I could, how did this happen i can almost I, I almost feel like this bro you would laugh so fucking hard if you watch that drones episode on documentary now you know what i'm saying with them trying to get in with that fucking with, with that fucking mexican drug lord man oh my god you would laugh so fucking hard bro <laughs> <laughs> And just seeing fucking Jack Black in there, see how much he looks like fucking Jim, you know what I'm saying, at this very moment. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just, oh my God, bro, you would laugh so fucking hard. In fact, I think that should be, I, I, I'm just going to suggest that it be on the agenda that we review Documentary Now. It's on the list. I haven't tried to get it yet, but hopefully it shouldn't be too difficult. It's on Netflix. It's on Netflix. Oh, it should be easy enough then. And a new season just just came up, you know what I'm saying, on on, Nef- on fucking Netflix. Oh, it's still going. Oh yeah, it's still. Oh my god, it's still going. They got fucking. They got fucking one of the scars guards, man. They, they, they do one, man. Helen Which Mary. one? There's like twelve. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, fucking it's Bill the Stalin, Northman. the Northman, Alex- Alexander. Okay. Yeah, he he did one. Um, it was called um, Soldier of Illusion. Where he where he basically goes to this weird ass you know what I'm saying this weird ass Eastern European country to film a live sitcom. It's insane. Um, fucking um, Kate Blanchett does a couple different does a couple different episodes. Helen Mirren all you know say Helen Mirren like has has hopes since the first season. So they've got some names in there. Yeah, they do. It started out, first couple of seasons started out with, you know what I'm saying, with Armisen and, you know what I'm saying, and see, this is how we do this, folks. This is our brilliance, by the way, you know what I'm saying, and, you know, Documentary Now basically, of course, has Armisen and one of our, you know what I'm saying, one of our con- contents of honor, Barry's own, you know what I'm saying, Bill Hader, you know what I'm saying, in there, you know what I'm saying, they, oh my God, they, they just kind of explore different fucking Things like you know, what I'm saying, as far as life, as far as how crazy bands can be, you know, what I'm saying, and shit like that, Hollywood and all that shit, man. Oh my god. So, and then this goes on from there, and other people just kind of fucking join in, man. Just this is an awesome damn shit that I think. And it's just like these little, these little bites of just like 20 minute, you know, what I'm saying, joints that just go like that, man. And you just it's fucking great, by the way. Showing, showing the genius of Bill Hader. You know what I'm saying? Like, even more. Like, I was already fucking with that guy going all the way back to Tropic Thunder, by the way. You know what I'm saying? That was like, love him in that fucking shit. Best Wait. guy, best guy to be, best guy to be alongside Tom Cruise. I never, I, I never would have, you know what I'm saying? I never could see anybody else being alongside Tom Cruise. Wait, wait, Bill Hader was in Tropic Thunder? Oh, my, yeah. Big dick, you know what I'm saying? Big dick player. Big dick player. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Wait, you know a, what I'm saying? wait a minute. He was Tom Cruise's assistant, wasn't he? Yes. Yeah. Big dick player. Big oh dick player. God. Yeah, oh swing it. Swing it low. Big dick player. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that, that was him. I need, to, I need to watch that movie again. I've only ever seen it once. I actually grabbed it out a couple days ago to rewatch. I haven't gotten to it yet, but that, I think, was the first Blu ray I ever bought. Oh my God. I fucking love that movie. Tom Cruise was great in the movie. And, and, and like I said. And like I said, from what no I've one, seen, I think it's the best thing he's ever done. And like yeah. I said, no one, no one else could have played alongside of what he was doing in that movie, but Bill Hader. I, I could, I could just see nobody else doing that shit, man. I could just see oh nobody else God. being alongside that motherfucker doing that. That's when, that's when, and, and basically, and, and even beyond that, man, where it all fucking started for me, fucking super bad. Where it all fucking started for me was fucking super bad. I've you know, never he, seen he was one of the, he was one of the one cops. of the cops in Superbad. Yeah, oh, and he I, absolutely I, fucking was. I've him and never, Seth, him and Seth Rogen. Oh my god. Yeah, I've never seen Superbad. Uh, man, you gotta, you got that's man. I'm McLovin. Oh my fucking god, bro. You've got. I mean, come on. This, this is where you got like the, the the future of what fucking Hollywood would end up being, man. In this fucking movie, man. Fucking Jonah Hill. Fucking, you know what I'm saying, Mitz Platts, you know what I'm saying? Oh my god, man, you, Scott fucking Pilgrim, are you fucking kidding me? I rewatched, I, I, uh... I don't like uh, Michael Sarah. I don't. I don't, I don't like him at all. I was, I was about to say, I rewatched you, This Is The End you, the other day, Yeah, if you, if you basically, Michael Sarah in that perfect. is if you, if you, so if you fucking... Base it, if you base it on that, then you, I can see you not liking him if you base it on that fucking movie. He looks like an asshole in that movie. 
You know what I'm saying? A drugged out, a drugged out, complete asshole. You know what I'm saying? But but that's not him. Scott Pilgrim, he's so great in that. He's so great in Scott Pilgrim. Have you seen Scott Pilgrim versus the World? No. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. You got to be kidding me right now. This guy has not seen. Tell me, you've seen it. Thank yeah, I, I don't remember it that well. But how long was it? fucking? It's been a long time since that came out. It was in that. It was in that hot streak of fucking. You know what I'm saying? A fucking Nick Frost and you know what I'm saying. Well, no, no, no. Well, I actually, no. Edgar. Oh my god. Edgar Wright. Yes. Okay. Edgar Wright. It was in hot streak where he was doing. You know what I'm saying? All those movies with them, but then all of a sudden kind of split off and did that fucking Scott Pilgrim versus the world. You know what I'm saying? It was like this weird off. She was like, all of a sudden fucking like Shaun of the Dead, you know what I'm saying? Like Hot Fuzz. And it was like along with that line. And then all of a sudden, Scott Pilgrim versus the world. It was kind of like this weird pivot. But an awesome pivot, by the way. <laughs> totally awesome yeah. pivot. I can't believe you don't remember. I mean, God, that's, that's the first time I laid eyes on fucking Mary Elizabeth Winstead. That's Ramona. Oh my god, she is fine. <laughs> ah, she's okay. Man, ah, boo, boo. boo. <laughs> you, are, you are out of your mind, man. Her in that hipster skirt. Oh my god, man. You are you fucking crazy? Like I, I just she. I mean, like I said, she she's played. She's she's done her role. She's played her movies, man. I, I like doing fucking you know, saying Tim Cloverfield Lane and, and, and a lot of other stuff. But she just never has been. She's never looked as awesome as she did in that fucking movie. I just she, she she never did, man. She's played in some wild shit. She is quite an actress, but I just you know, she's always after my heart. Even played in the fucking in the fucking prequel of the fucking thing. I mean, it's just like girls after my own heart. I mean, it's like goddamn. <laughs> like I already think you're like you already think you're like the number one awesome thing, but but you know, such is life. Yep. Which, of course, they uh, that is a quote from uh, a certain movie. Uh oh, I don't I, I don't want to spoil it. John Wick. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh oh. Well, so yes. we've been so we've been. Here at an hour, and so uh, do we want? Do we want wanna to get going to Barry? If you guys would like, I mean, I don't. I'm, how you know? I'm not sure how how long you guys intend. I mean, like I said, I mean, four hour shows. I mean, especially with with talking about interesting content and talking with you guys to bounce ideas off of. I mean, it, it seems to go by, but I don't want <laughs> you guys to feel under pressure that we have to kind of you know say make that kind of show happen. All the fucking time, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Now, dark was a special situation. Yeah, that's now, like that. That's you could spend <laughs> you could have spent six hours on that if you really go into everything. And Jim is leaving us on the cliffhanger because we still have to say our humorous goodbye. We were still we still have to complete our humorous goodbye to, to dark. You know what I'm saying? Before it's all over, with. we do. So <laughs> it's officially over with it as our review, but we had a humorous thing going. You know what I'm saying? The, that we were work that we were working towards that that should have that should have been completed, but you know we'll, we'll get to that. We will get to that. So just letting you know that I hadn't forgot about this type of thing, and I'm, I'm starting to get a, I'm starting to get sharp on my game now. So I'm not forgetting the content <laughs> and, the, and the continuances that we needed to work on. But man, I would I would love to go. I know you guys can expound on this, and you guys have seen so much more. And you know, I but I at least want to kind of jump and and just and just start in on this one. From the first, now I'm already fucking say like as you already know in our in my segue to this weirdly enough, ironically enough in a way, Bill Hader is definitely somebody that I've definitely been you know what I'm saying been a big fan of for a while. He's definitely got this this weird sense of he's got this weird sense of real humor. He gets the whole like humor in real life type of situation that I talk about a lot of times. You know what I'm saying? You know, I've, I've kind of told you about that before. You know what I'm saying? Like, sometimes, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes humor can be in a horror movie, you know what I'm saying? Even, a, even the most brutal one, because cause sometimes humor happens in real life, even when something, even right before something terrible happens. Sometimes it just happens like that, you know? And 
sometimes you can be humorous even at a point where things seem really fucking tense and weird. You know what I'm saying? And I think he gets that. And I think he definitely got it when it came to doing Barry. I mean, from the from the first episode, you know what I'm saying, where like he's staking this fucking guy out. And no, it, no, better yet, before we even get to that fucking point. You're looking at your looking at your fucking name here, Damien. <laughs> I'm just I'm going back to when he first meets up with those fucking Chetnians, and I just never realized that Chetnians were were like this. I I never <laughs> I never thought that if, if this is true, if, 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 what, if what we're seeing, if what I've seen in this first couple of seasons is true, Chetnians have taken the trophy. For being the Euro trashiest <laughs> of the Euro trash, you know what I'm saying? There have ever been. I'm just, I'm just gonna fucking say that. Damn. And it's, it's, it is a big part thanks to No Ho Hank. So please, I just, just want to start there. Can we, can we please expound, Davy? Since you are No Ho Davy right now, please expound on No Ho Hank right now. <laughs> so I'm gonna. I actually made and uploaded this before. This is No Ho Hank. <laughs> Some of the many faces of Noho Hank, who is initially not the leader of the Chechenian mob, but he's like the second in charge kind of guy, and who is probably the, not even probably, he's the best character of the entire show. <laughs> he is, he, he's, he's a ray of sunshine amongst brutality and insanity. Like this, I don't have enough words coming to my stupid brain right now to describe this fucking guy. But I don't know, man. I mean, this this show definitely gives you a lot of characters. I mean, see, this is again. I gotta say, this is a show that doesn't even. I mean, it's it's not. It didn't need an hour. I mean, we're talking about. I mean, we're talking about an hour. You know what I'm saying? Not even an hour, not even like 10, 12 episodes, eight episodes, like fucking, like fucking maybe like 30 minutes. You know what I'm saying? Maybe like, you know what I'm saying? And it's like just so much that was done. Just so much that was just brought in. But you do feel like it was like weirdly enough. It was like, it was definitely some psychological stuff going on here because you're supposed to believe Okay, I don't want to do it this way. Let, let's just because because it's not a whole lot. It's not a whole lot of episode in these episodes. So we got to go through the episodes so we get to certain parts. So episode one, I mean, like I said, it was funny for me after he meets with those guys, which is fucking comedy. You know what I'm saying? And that like, that first scene right was when uh, when Hank's showing the uh, the video of the guy's wife having sex with the other guy, which kind of starts off that whole thing. Yeah. He's playing another like, what, what do you have to show this? <laughs> Turn it off. I'm, I'm sorry. I mean, he was always, from the point from the point that he walks out and you see him and the way he's talking, I mean, it was just like, and oh he's my just God. Like, <laughs> oh, my God. I'm, I'm like, I'm sitting here like, oh, my God. As soon as I see him come out with the, with the damn laptop. I'm like, God, man, the, the Euro trash has not been taken out today. You know what I'm saying? Like, Jesus Christ. It just stuck around and it's holding meetings. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh my God. And it was just like, oh my God, from there, it was like, yeah, he wouldn't, the guy's telling him to turn it off. He wouldn't turn it off. It's supposed to be a boy. You're trying to get him, you're trying to get a guy hit up for him and like, you won't turn off the, you know what I'm saying? The, the fucking footage. You know what I'm saying? It's like, geez, come on. And then it's like stalking the guy. To me, it's just like stalking the guy. And then happening upon this situation that was an audition, you know, and, and then just like, and this being pulled into the situation, like, like the, the more, uh, I don't want to jump ahead, but but you kind of have to when you sit in these moments. It's like, do you think back on that and, and, and feel like that maybe he was looking for something to pull him away from that? Not they, just how, what? I think the Barry getting into acting thing was less of initial, at least initially, and maybe the whole time, more about Sally than it was about the acting. I think that drew him a little bit, but I think it was like he, he saw her and he's like, oh, ho, ho, ho. Hmm. he was just kind of struck by this woman. Maybe. I just felt like 
that the more I got to know him, the more I look back on that and I felt like maybe he was just looking for anything to sort of, anything more interesting to sort of pull him out of, you know, being a, a fucking contract killer. Well, that is constantly Barry's thing. He's he's always looking for an out and always and constantly trying to convince himself that deep down he's actually a good person. Despite the God knows how many people he's killed by the point we actually meet him, mm-hmm. which is probably a lot. Charles? No, nope, nothing? No. Oh, um, no, it's just, um, uh, yeah, I'm kind of, <laughs> me, uh, me waking up early this morning, oh. it's starting, it's starting to catch up, it's starting to catch up with me. No, no, uh, no problem, please, man, no, yeah, no it's fucking just, problem. Uh, yeah, it's just, uh, let me, let me see where, where I'm at here, um. Don't feel judged. Yeah, um, uh, no, um, have, like, I will say that with uh, with don't, Barry, don't feel judged. Yeah, yeah, you're judging me. I'm just wiping something off of my finger. Bullshit. Don't feel don't feel judged. Bullshit. <laughs> now, now I'm just I'm, I'm just I'm just I'm just wagging it dry. Okay, that's, that's all I'm doing. I'm just wagging it dry. That, that's that's all. That's all. Yeah, yeah, but uh, no, I, I, just, just to say, just to give my initial thoughts of Barry. By the way, a little off writers, a little, little off writers, okay? Just, okay. Oh, my God. It's a little off writers, that's all. Uh, you, you, you uh, just keep, you're just keeping them coming, aren't you? You're just keeping them coming. No, no, no. no. <laughs> Don't feel judged. Don't feel judged. This <laughs> fucking guy. <laughs> yeah, but uh, no, just, my, my initial thoughts of Barry... We are uh, are positive, but uh, I will say that um, there are parts of the show where I do find a little difficult to get through, and uh, those parts are the scenes involving the acting. Like Barry going to the acting classes, Sally doing the shows that she's trying to get off the ground. All that stuff, yeah, th- that is just really cringy for me. And I well, just why I, is I, that? Why, why? Because the the thing the thing that I found fun was that I mean it, it can be, but then you start to connect to certain shit. It's like it's like at first, okay, I get where you're coming from because at first, right, when I saw oh boy that he Ryan Madison that he was that, that he was supposed to kill, he ends up doing a fucking scene with him. And I fucking see him with his fucking hair at first. And I'm sitting here like, what the fuck? And then when it, once he starts getting into the fucking scene, I'm like, it didn't take me like, like oh, okay. Fucking true romance. I'm like, oh, oh, oh okay, yeah. And I'm sitting like, because otherwise right. I'm sitting there like, what the fuck is going on here? Like, what? I was like, oh, that's what the friends. fuck. Gary Oldman's going on here. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I mean, look, give look tomato tomato. I mean, fake dress there, fake dress on through whatever. You know, look, tomato tomato. You know what I'm saying? You can say fake dress. It was fake dress. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, less you know. convincing fake dress, I should have said. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And and less I got to say though, you you really have to respect Gary Oldman when you know, you really have to respect Gary Oldman when you realize. I mean, he didn't do an awful job. He didn't do an awful job trying to trying to do what Gary Oldman did, but you really got to respect the kind of oomph that Gary Oldman put into, you know what I'm saying, playing that role, though. I, I, you do got to give that one up. <laughs> his, damn, his damn British accent and peek out of that one, I got to tell you that much. He was having too much fun with that one. <laughs> oh, yeah, he fucking Aww. sunk himself deep into that character. <laughs> I don't know. It's just I've always had a problem with shows and movies where they are where actors are playing a parody of actors i've i've always had a problem with that i've never liked it and so you don't so you don't like you don't like spoofs you don't like satire type shit no no no. satire is fine if it's done a certain way and Hmm. it has to meet a very specific criteria with me and that criteria is very difficult to explain 
It's like it's like trying to describe color to a blind person. Okay, but I would yeah. describe I would describe blue as more like a a cool, you know, what I'm saying a cool, soothing feeling. You know, what I'm saying very nighttime. I I kind of I kind of I kind of look as blue as more nighttime, more clear. You know, what I'm saying like like you know, what I'm saying it, it's it's darker to me. You know, what I'm saying but very subtle, very toned. You know, what I'm saying like. I would just say I was making an attempt to describe color to a blind person. Just saying. I was going to say, our blind audience is very happy today. Mr. Stone's made an effort to reach out. <laughs> just just saying. You know, and, and, and also making my point, Charles, that you could describe it if you tried. But no problem. No no, no judgments. God no judgments. Damn. Just blame me. Just God blame me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. I get it. Dab his finger and just. It's always getting messy. I'm just, uh, yeah, I'm just I get saying, it. yeah, yeah, I get it now. I'm the asshole. No, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, 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 sir, no, sir. I'm just smelling something very foul in my room here. That's all. I'm not. Bullshit. This is this is not any symbolism yeah, yeah. on you. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I know what you're smelling. I know exactly what you're smelling right now. You're smelling bullshit. <laughs> Jeez Louise there, Charles. Jeez Louise, pal. I mean, my God. I mean, once you wake up, pal, you're really spicy, aren't you? you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you keep pointing at the stars and keep keeping people in the balls, don't you, Charles? <laughs> all right, but um, all right, but uh, let's see. Uh, okay, so let me ask you guys this: What is your thoughts on Sally as a character? Um, I, I she. <laughs> <laughs> she's a complex character but if you want to simplify it she is a selfish selfish person who thinks too much of her own talent she's vapid yeah she's, she's very I, I, did, I did describe her as vapid you know I do not like her at all like <laughs> and, and as the as the show progresses and I'm now in the early episodes of season 4 I feel fucking hate her i don't like her at all oh my god i do not i cannot stand her because and she's I, got this she's got this whole thing about her where again she believes too much in her own talent but then she's also got this kind of she's got this backstory with domestic abuse and stuff which is you know that's a whole other thing but yeah. she's also unwilling to completely tell the truth about it and so it's a story we're never really quite sure about because well, of her well, being I mean, like, like she, she constantly changes the story. Like, obviously she had some shit that she went through, but we're never quite sure exactly how bad it was or the, the first, if, the, you know, the first red flag for me with Sally is when she was trying to tell her story about what happened to her. And she was telling about that time where, uh, Sam had choked her and she basically started telling him off and everything and then when she was contacting her old friend and she told that part of the story to her friend and her friend was surprised by that. And yeah, then, she's like, you remember this, right? And she's like, no. Nah. Yeah, it's just like, okay, so this didn't happen? It's like, then why are you making this up? It's like, like why, why make something like this up? Because telling like making up scenarios in an abuse story is not a good idea, but it's a very bad idea. But in this world, but see in this world, and this is the thing that like, that I think Barry kind of does better than, I mean, it, it, it's kind of, it, it's kind of weird in a way that our, that our show kind of started that this whole show and the evolution before the evolution of it even started with you, where you know what I'm saying where Joe eventually in his travels ended up going to L.A. and ended up getting into you know what I'm saying 
that whole entertainment world, you know what I'm saying, they're in his own way. And then here, and then here is, you know what I'm saying, here is. And then here comes Barry, another kind of killer, you know, what I'm from another place that kind of comes to LA for this temporary situation and gets caught up in the entertainment, you know what I'm saying, situation himself and everything like that. And, but honestly, they sell you like him, Barry, you know what I'm saying, more than what people might think you should, you know, in a way, you know, and in even way you're supposed to not like Fuchs and feel like, they, because they, because they, I think they realize at certain points, man, they, they really had to push a little bit more to make it seem like, you know what I'm saying, Fuchs had it coming because, I mean, I at least felt like at a certain point that he was trying to keep the fucking guy, you know what I'm saying, from getting caught up by fucking Loach. You know what I'm saying? Which I don't think is a very clever, I don't think it's a very clever pull away from Roach, but I mean, it's just, you know, whatever. You know, if, that, if that's if, if that's what if that's what works for you, if that's what works for you, Bill. That works for me too. <laughs> okay, and uh, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna jump forward ahead a little bit because I really want to talk about this particular episode. It happens in season two. It's called Ronnie and Lily. I already know my favorite, uh, quite possibly my favorite episode of the entire show. Yes. <laughs> Oh my god, I love that episode because he goes he goes into the house, tries uh, ex- explaining the situation to Ronnie, says, "Oh no, I don't want to kill you. I just want you to pack up some stuff and go live somewhere else for a little bit and just go into hiding." Like, listen, we're going to drive to Chicago. I'm not going to kill you. I've been sent here to kill you by the guy whose wife you're fucking, who's a detective who's after me, but don't worry about that. We're going to drive to Chicago. <laughs> You're going to hide out for a year. <laughs> yeah. And then it's like, oh, who, whose Taekwondo trophies are these? Uh, like- that scene, when he walks into the room, the guy's packing up his shit, and he's looking around at the trophies, and he's fucking... <laughs> oh, my God. And then what was... And, and, and then what all that... <laughs> whose Taekwondo trophies are these? The guy's packing up his shit and sort of puts his hand up. And at that moment... <laughs> You know, Barry's just like, oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Me as an audience member is just like, oh, fuck. <laughs> but I mean, all that prep, though, to, to, to one of the worst fight scenes I've ever seen, though, it was so, it was physical, but it was just, it was clumsy. It was, it was sloppy. It, 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 that, it was sloppy. That's, I think, is the point, though. It's, it's, yeah. it's probably how it would actually play out. Or Probably. a closer version to how it would play out. It's not yeah. this Hollywood like, version of the fight scene. For a guy who was like, past his prime, sure. No, no, it's just like, in, in all these like big like martial arts movies where the fight scenes are very well, like, well shot, well filmed and everything, they're supposed to be that way. But the way it was filmed in Barry... I agree with Damien. I think if a fight, if a fight like that actually happened in real life, it would play out exactly like that. It would be sloppy. It would be clumsy. I think it would be. I'm saying that a guy with that much, you know, what I'm saying with that much hardware, you know, what I'm saying if he was keep if he was keeping himself up and he wasn't past his prime, you know, what I'm saying it wouldn't get that close to be that clumsy. I'm just saying because fun fact, that guy was in, you know, what I'm saying was in. You know, it was in John Wick. You know, saying by the way, funny. You know, saying funny enough. Really, he was. Yeah, he was. Which he was one? Main, he was the main. You know, saying he was the main hitman. You know, saying he was the main. You know, I'm saying like goon guy going after. You know, saying leading the charge after John Wick. In what movie? Which one? In the, ori- in the original one. In the original one. Okay. Where the son is like, where the son is in, where the son is in the hot tub and whatnot, and he's like, "What am I supposed to be scared of?" You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you, you, know, you, you should be. You know what I'm saying? He ended up fighting them in the end. You know what I'm saying? They ended up having a couple of different fight scenes. He was much younger then. I rem- I remember that fight scene vaguely, um, but I'm gonna have to watch the first movie again. That movie is hard to get through because of you know the the dog scene. I mean, it's really hard to watch because it's just like, I mean, come on, man. Fucking Theon Greyjoy, that piece of garbage. Yeah, I know. I know, dude. It's I avoided watching that movie for so fucking long because of that scene with the dog. I just I was like, I don't want to fucking watch that cuz it's just going to fucking depress me. 
I definitely understand. It's, it's tough, but again, it, it just makes you like, if it was his wife or something like the Punisher, you'd be just like, yeah, you fucking go kill those guys. But <laughs> some bad at being just this cute little dog where I'm just like, I'm really just like, yeah, you fucking, you take out everyone. Yeah, I, 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 I mean, when I, I finally did get around to watching the movie, and I was like, oh my god, I can't fucking watch this. I really couldn't. It, it was tough. But anywho, moving on back to Barry, it's just, um, I mean, I don't know. Just like I, I understand why the fight scene was as clumsy and as sloppy as it was, and it worked. I thought it worked. But that, the fight scene itself, was not the best part. The best part. I'm say it's the next sequence. Yeah, the next sequence <laughs> was a young girl by the name of Lily, who was jumping around and like swinging all across the fucking house. Like who was guy. like, what do you guess? She's probably 10, 10 I, probably 12, something yeah, like around, that, I guess. Around, around 12, yeah. But I would say that she was running, like, swinging around the freaking house like a goddamn spider monkey. She turns into a rabid animal, yeah, <laughs> basically. Yeah. And it's yeah. fucking glorious. Yeah. And then, of course, later on. She sneaks into their fucking car while they're looking for them. While <laughs> that, was, that, was, that was so great. She bites onto Fuchs' <laughs> cheek, and he just says, just kill her. Just, <laughs> just kill her. And he's like, I'm not going to kill a fucking kid. And then, <laughs> and then she just ju she lets go. She gets out of the car. She's in front of the car with the headlights on her. She roars at them for like in some animal scream. It was and definitely, yeah, they kind of amplified it a little bit with some kind of modulation or maybe in a, some kind of effect yeah. but made it yeah. just seem like like where she was previously i think just doing her own sound effects <laughs> and just sort of growling and shit yeah. that point they literally made her sound like some kind of beast yeah and then fuchs just looks at her and screams what are you <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love the scene after the fight scene with Barry, where she's fucking like I think she, wait, she stabs him, she throws like canned food at him, nails him in the face and shit, <laughs> and then she just jumps out the window and he's sort of looking out the window. She jumps the fence and shit, jumps the fence and then like the the hedge of the yard next to them, and he's just like, "What the fuck." <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, I, I, I kind of wish they'd done more episodes. Like it's, it's, I think it could be part of why it's my favorite episode of the show because it is so unique. Like, there's no other episode like that in the show. Like it, there's no like, I don't think they deal with any of the other stuff at all in that episode. It's purely like, it's purely dealing with that situation yeah, throughout the entire wrong, thing. Yeah. Like, there's no acting class, there's no anybody else, it's just this situation mm. that plays out almost in real time. Like, there's, you know, obviously cuts to a little bit later throughout the day, but it's pretty much a series of four or five sequences that play out in almost real time. Mm. That was very cool. Oh, yeah, no, the, epi the episode was great, and then we find out that Ronnie is actually alive and that he has a neck brace around his neck and he's in <laughs> oh, the, the, the scene after, like, when they're having the that sloppy fight sequence earlier on and then fucking Barry finally, like, punches him in the throat and the guy starts wheezing because I guess he's, uh, what do you call it? The, his windpipe has been uh, crushed. Tra trachea. Trachea, thank you. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> Yeah, then he sounds like he's he's just going nuts with the wind chucks, and Barry just sits down. He's like, "Dude, like <laughs> your windpipe is crushed. Like, just calm down." He's just fucking going nuts with the nunchucks. He drops one of them. He's still going nuts with the next one. He's like, "Just, dude, please just calm down." <laughs> and then he finally just drops to the floor. <laughs> and lo and behold, later on, <laughs> Barry's trying to get some help for himself in a. In a, uh, was it like a pharmacy thing? Oh, and also <laughs> turns his head. There's this fucking guy. 
Who taught Fuchs how to how to set stitches? <laughs> Probably no one. Yeah, it's just seriously, man. All Barry had to do was just stretch his back, and it tore all the fucking stitches. Yep, <laughs> instantly. Yep. But it, okay, <laughs> okay. Here's my thing, though. Now, now looking now now going through the first season, even into and even into the second season. You still didn't feel <clears throat> that he was really trying to give this acting thing a go? Or, or, I mean, or did you, I mean, you, you eventually felt that way and you felt like it was initially about, you know, then Sally. Initially, I think it was a mix. Like, I, I think he was somewhat interested by the acting. I think he kind of, he was looked at it like, oh, okay, this is something I could do. I think she was what kept him there, though. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. Like if it wasn't for her, I don't think I think yeah, he would have probably left the acting class, killed Ryan at some point, and that would have been it. I mean, she definitely she definitely clinched on to him like a grabber of alien, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I definitely get what you're talking about. Yeah, but at the same time, I don't think Sally actually cares about Barry at all. No, I think she- much like he sees her in the acting class as some kind of escape, she also viewed him in a similar fashion. Yeah. But, but, but let me ask you this. Now, the, the scene, the, the scene that, the way she adjusted that scene in the, in the last episode of season two, could, you know what I'm saying, could that have been the real nature of their relationship? Or her marriage before, or was oh. that, or was that all her doing? Is, is, that, is that all her doing? You know what I'm saying? Or, or, or all her makeup? Because sometimes I wonder. There's that whole speech and that conversation about her being afraid, and it was that bit of a setup. You know what I'm saying? To, to make somebody seem like it's okay to say that this happened when it was really, when it was really this other thing. You know what I'm saying? Like it was sort of like a bait and switch, and maybe that. Maybe the whole relationship was volatile between the both of them. You know what I'm saying? And everything. I mean, even in season one, you see, once Barry starts to sort of assert himself a little bit, she doesn't like that. The relationship starts to get a bit rocky at that point. Even in the first season, Barry starts to sort of starts to speak up a little bit more, and she she doesn't like that. So it kind of makes you wonder. But, I mean... I even wondered at a certain point with that kind of. I'll be back in two seconds. No problem. I kind of even wonder with that kind of abuse, though, that she said that she suffered. You know what I'm saying? It seemed to be like she seemed to be willing to kind of, sort of like mix it up in that way to sort of elicit a response from him, which I felt kind of weird because most people are so, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's about triggers now. It's about triggers and everything like that. And, you know what I'm saying, why would somebody want to, you know what I'm saying, spurn that kind of response on, you know what I'm saying, and even to have that person sort of react, you know what I'm saying, in a visceral way, that would put, you know what I'm saying, that would put them sort of like, that would sort of like uh, transport them back to that moment, you know what I'm saying, in a way. Like, I understand it's supposedly for the art, but I mean, it just seems like for somebody who felt a certain way about that, that maybe you wouldn't, you wouldn't tempt fate like that, you know. It's, it's know. like, like you know, what I'm saying it's, it's like doing a, it's like doing a, it's like doing a line of you know, what I'm saying coke for the sake of you know, what I'm saying for the sake of realism for a movie or a damn play, you know, what I'm saying if if you if, if that you know, what I'm you know that's something that that you've had issues with, it's like, you know, would you really have to go that far for that? You know, what I'm saying like I, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't. Know. It's just um, what like what Damien was saying about. Um, the relationship between Sally and Barry and how De- uh, Barry was um, asserting himself and being more outspoken in that Sally didn't like that. And then, of course, Sally uh, making stuff up about her previous marriage uh, with Sam and his abuses and everything. I'm not saying that Sam wasn't abusive, uh, but the the fact is is that some of the stuff that Sally was making up I don't know it's just that that definitely speaks towards her character and that is definitely part of the reason why I don't like her uh, 
she comes off as just very manipulative to me. Very manipulative. I mean, look, I, that's and that's the thing I was kind of coming into a, a little bit here, that I felt like, because that's kind of what I almost I try to, I try to go in with a clear head and just and just basically analyze the show as it goes. But I've kind of gotten into this kind of cynical point of feeling like that a lot of shows kind of like the salaciousness and the where you don't there's no clear marker on okay you know what I'm saying these are the people at least trying to be good at least trying to be righteous in their way you know and 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 by the way side note real quick um K1 calendar here did mention I'm not sure if he's answering this particular question in the situation but because she was hiding in deep she was hiding in deep in my subconscious when she did it Hmm. I'm hoping that okay. Um, if that was answering the question, like maybe you know, what I'm saying if if we were to apply that to the show and to Sally, like that's what I'm thinking. Like maybe in a way that that when you had somebody kind of you know validating that you know, what I'm saying so because maybe that was a little bit of a kick up at first, and then when somebody you know, what I'm saying like sometimes I wonder. You know, say sometimes like the weak, and then you know, say maybe the weak thing, and, and kind of acting like that. That's the real truth, and then maybe you can make it in what you in what you want to make it. So then it's like because thinking about Barry for a second, like Barry a couple of times tried to tell people in his way about his, you know, say about his hitman life, but then people kept, you know, say kept mistakenly taking, you know. As it, as him talking about his time in the military, you know, so they were, so it was almost like he was, he kind of also always had this avenue to sort of be able to sort of like express himself, but then people were were never looking at him, you know, so never looking at him horrifically, you know, what I'm saying as if he was some kind of monster because he was in the military. At least, no people who don't have a down view of the military and government structure overall, at least, like, at least he was dealing with nobody in in that room that that had those type of issues, but. Otherwise, you know, they they didn't look at him in a way of, man, you had to done you had to have done something fucked up over there, but it was just more about wartime and that's what the fuck it was. But but all the time he was just telling people, I'm a fucking hit man. I'm being made to fucking kill people, and you know what I'm saying. And he's telling them that, but it's like they're thinking, ah, you're saying that because you're in the military, you know. And, you know they they do terrible shit in there because it's war. And it was like even know, Jane, so, the first time he met Jane, before Jane even knew any of that stuff. He told Jane directly, like, what he's doing <laughs> and how he feels bad about it. And Jane just thought it was a monologue from some movie. Yep. Oh, and, and also, he's like, it was I, about... I told you everything. And he's like, that was good. What was that from? And he's looking at him like, huh? So, yeah, and Jane, I just... Jane gives him his price because that's Jane. So I think in her own way, that's why I sometimes wonder if that was kind of in her way. Uh oh, is that me here? What? What happened? Did something happen? Technical difficulties. I, I can see you and hear you. Can you hear me? Hello, hello. Uh, I apologize, folks. We are having some technical difficulties at the moment. <laughs> Apparently so. Can you hear us? Because you seem fine to me. Something seems odd. What's going on? Everything kind of defaulted. It's weird.
I may have to go back out and go back in. I don't know. Give me a second. Okay. Whatever. Try that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so where were we? Um. <clears throat> yeah. All right. Where so we? Uh, we were <laughs> serious talking question. Of, uh, yeah, we were talking about. Um, Let's see. Uh, well, I was talking about um, Sally and uh, how she was. Uh, I thought she was manipulative. Uh, Stone was talking about um, something like uh, crap. Oh, shit, I already forgot what he was talking about. Crap, I am a terrible co-host. Um, I'm glad I'm not the only one with shitty memory. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, he was talking about uh, something to do with uh uh, Barry. Oh, now I remember. He was talking about Barry. Um. Uh. Uh. uh about uh, shit. Um. <laughs> I apologize, folks. I'm being. I'm being terrible at this. I. Yes. I do <laughs> podcasts. <laughs> Currently, I feel like I'm just watching myself, but I look different. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I remember we were talking about we were talking about Barry mentioning to Cousineau about how he had like basically confessed uh, like like that he is a hitman that he kills people and that he feels yes. bad about it and that Cousineau thought that this was a monologue from like a movie and he asked like oh where where is that from and like Barry was like oh I mean like huh it's just like yeah he's like huh. Yeah, right. yeah. Next class is tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Charged by the hour of whatever he said. Yeah, yeah, we were talking about that, and then, uh, yeah. But, um, and then after that, I don't remember much. <laughs> yeah, because I, cause I am a forgetful person. Yes, I, I, I'm, I'm an old man, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my, my memory's always been dreadful. It's either I remember pretty much everything about a specific thing, or just barely anything at all yes because <laughs> there seems I to have, be no in between yes because i have a selective good memory <laughs> yeah pretty much <laughs> <laughs> all right but uh no it's just like what else is there to talk about oh this is this doesn't happen in season two but this is something that i want to bring up it happens at the end of season three uh the the bmx biker guy that go that breaks into barry's apartment and attacks Barry and then attacks Sally and tries to choke her. Was that Pedro Pascal? Fuck. Uh, I haven't seen it. Like I haven't rewatched it yet. Just cause we said we weren't doing three yet. So I didn't finish the last couple episodes. I, know, but I, just, I, I have to, I, I want to say no. You know what? But look, I can't be certain about that. I'm going to look it up. I could have sworn that was Pedro Pascal. Pedro Pascal. I, it's right. definitely possible. I just can't that is not how you spell. That is not how you sell, spell Pedro Pascal. All right. Uh, let's see. Um, is he in Barry? Um... Uh, okay, so that was not Barry. He was not in Barry, so that wasn't Pedro Pascal. So you're just being racist against Chilean people. <sighs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're excused from answering that question. <laughs> God damn it. I don't know. I mean, I, I, something about it just looked like Pedro Pascal. Yeah. I said it. God damn it. That's... You, I, 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 just, I just keep digging I tried to help deep. you Charles yeah I just keep digging the hole deeper don't I <laughs> wow that wow My was God, directed man. At, yeah, that wow was directed at me now I, was, I am such a terrible just, person <laughs> just Jesus I, I am such a terrible person wow <laughs> It may be the most hateful thing I've ever heard. Yes, yes, I, I, I am horrible. I am, I am, I am going to be destroyed. I am such a terrible man. As uh, I said, don't worry. I'll, yeah, yeah, I'll be in yeah. hell. Yeah, I'll be yeah. there waiting for you, but Yo, I'll oh, get yeah. there first. I guarantee it. Yo, oh yeah. <laughs> oh man, but uh, no, it's just um, 
let's see. Uh, what what else is there? Um, um, let's see. Um, what let's see. What what other what what else of significance happened in season two? I'm trying to remember here. Um, oh, one thing I wanted to bring up uh, that happened. I think it happened in season two. Uh, Barry was sitting in his room in his apartment, and he hears something. And then he looks to the side, sees a hole show up in his wall. It's a little hole. And then he sees another And then a hole. series of holes. And a series yeah. of holes. It's like, oh, shit, there's a sniper. And he he hits the deck. And then he goes he goes back. He finds the roof where they're at. It's Noho Hank. And it's his crony. I can't remember his name. The guy that keeps getting shot in the arm. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm so bad with names. But, yes, yeah. that guy. Yeah. Like, so, so you haven't you haven't finished season four yet, right? No, not yet. I'm a, I'm like okay, well, twenty five percent done. Okay, well, all I'll say is there is a callback to a, a similar scenario. Okay. To that but no, my, in season my, four. My favorite moment of that entire sequence is when Noho Hank realizes that if their plan works, he's like him and Cristobal get fifty fifty, and he's like me and Cristobal fifty fifty. <laughs> And he just starts dancing. Like, Jesus <laughs> Christ. It's like, like, you can have it all. You can literally have it all. And you're more concerned about your bump, your bump and uglies and having 50, 50, like 50, 50 with crystal ball. Like, what the hell? <laughs> the absolute joy that comes, like, that exudes from Hank, it's so infectious. It is. It like, really is. Like, when that guy's smiling and happy, you feel happy yourself just seeing it. <laughs> yeah, I like know. That fuck, I've, I've never, I know that guy, like, I know, uh, was it Anthony Carrigan? Yeah, Anthony Carrigan, yeah. Yeah, I know, he's been in, like, several things before. He was in Gotham and The Flash and various other things. I've never actually seen him in anything before this. But I can't imagine those roles were as good as Noho Hank. Uh, I watched him in Gotham. Uh, he played Victor Zaz. Uh, yeah. His his performance in Gotham is nothing like Noho Hank. It is completely different. Um, he's always serious as uh, Victor Zaz. Like he never cracked a smile. He never laughed or anything. He was always menacing. And uh, actually, I didn't even think he was that good of a Victor Zaz because it was so far removed from the comic book version of Victor Zaz. In Gotham, it's sort of like he had, he had the visual going, but that's about it kind of thing. Not not even that. Um, his his version of Victor's eyes was basically just an assassin. That's it. Okay. He 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 wasn't he wasn't a uh, serial killer like Victor's eyes was in the comics. He that's just kind of boring. He, why would you why would you fuck with that aspect? Yeah, yeah. All he was was just a henchman and an assassin that worked for a crime family. That's it. That's all he was. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. He worked, I don't know why you uh, changed that. That's he worked to me. That's what always made Victor Zaz was the fact that he was this, yeah, serial killer. Yeah, yeah. He worked for the Falcone crime family, and then after that family went belly up, he ended up working for the Penguin, and then that's mm -hmm. it. And then after that, he kind of disappeared. Sorry, guys. That was Trey unprofessional there, and. Then... Well, I don't know what the hell happened. It was like all of a sudden, it was just like. What was it like? You couldn't hear us, so. I could hear you, but it was like zap. It was like, it was like my fucking mic and headphone setup was completely was like zapped out of the mix. It's like it's like, my it's like my yeti shit was not even an option anymore. It was just like I had to I had to do a whole fucking MacBook restart. You know what I'm saying? To, to fucking gain it back. That's odd because you sounded fine to me. Yeah, I mean, I didn't, I, was, I didn't even notice anything happened. I was open air. I was still, like I said, the MacBook is still pretty okay. See, the, the the truth of the matter is, Jim is a very exacting person. That that that's that's what that is going to tell you there. But I can admittedly say that there seems to be not a lot of sound going on around me right now. So me being open air on the MacBook mic didn't sound as bad as it might have if I had a lot of other things going on around me. You know what I'm saying? A little bit more midday. Or at night or something like that. So, 
you know, even with certain things going on with the headphones, you know what I'm saying, with the headphones and the mic, I have a little bit more control of how much you actually hear when something is going on, as much as much as I possibly can, you know, so just a little bit of a difference, you know what I'm saying, that that's all, but if I, but if my, if my house was a little bit more awake, you would be a little bit more annoyed with me, you know what I'm saying, doing a show with you in the open air. It's like, who's like cooking eggs? What is this shit? <laughs> or something. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Or, you know what I'm saying? Or my ear being my ear and demanding as hell sometimes. So you'd, you'd hear that. You know what I'm saying? A lot. So. Yeah, me and Charles were just talking about the great Noho Hank. Well, I do want to talk Anthony about. Anthony Carrigan. I do want to talk about. You know what I'm saying? I do want to talk about Fuchs a little bit, though, man. They, they, they okay. really. They, you know, also, I, I mean, because they, they both connect. By the way, I mean, I mean, look, let me tell you something right there. That I'm telling you, him on the right, you know, the no ho Hank on the right is exactly what Jerry saw when he saw fucking Jim in that scarf <laughs> and hat with the zinc on the nose. That's exactly what he saw. He saw the island. You know what I'm saying? Well, personally, me, I saw the island of Dr. Moreau, which is what I see right now. You know what I'm saying? Only a more fit version. But yeah, I, I definitely uh, saw Oh, yeah. That. Yeah. Considerably more fit version. Hey, hey. You you know what, man? You you leave you leave fat Marlon Brando alone. Hey, I'm, I'm not judging. I'm just saying. No, her Hank him. is, uh, you know. <laughs> I call him Fando. care of himself. I call him Fando, Fat Brando. I like to call him Fando. <laughs> Brando the Hut. You know what? Fando just seems really fun. Fando, Fat Brando. Fando. <laughs> you know, but um, any, at any rate, I like Fuchs, man. Look, I got to say again, I really felt like Fuchs was trying to was trying to escape out of the hotel or whatever. He was trying to escape out. He was trying to keep him from contacting him, from being able to say anything that could be recordable. You know what I'm saying? Without, you know what I'm saying? Without telling him, without telling him, you know what I'm saying? And having that recorded or caught that he's trying to drive him off or drive him away from being implicated in any goddamn thing. He tried. So while people, so while even they said, even the co-creator said that he was supposed to be like a bad guy, he turned on him. I mean, he squeezed in a certain position that, I mean, yeah, I mean, look, Cause I, I I meant to say that too in my fucking notes, man. I mean, who the fuck follows a fucking hitman? That, that that's the, that's the thing that, that 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 irked the fuck out of me, man. Who the fuck follows a hitman? Like, what the fuck is wrong with people? You know what I'm saying? Who does that shit? Like I like sometimes sometimes certain people do the most interesting things. You know what I'm saying when it comes to. You know what I'm saying? When it comes to their job, some people are, are not just all, okay, I'm going to wait, you know what I'm saying, and maybe snipe you. They may want to get in close and make it seem like it's a damn accident or some other bullshit or whatever their method is. But why fucking follow a goddamn hitman? That's just the weirdest thing for me. Like That relationship they, with Fuchs is, it's it's a confusing one. No, it, well, well, no, no. They push it. They push it on a way deeper dive, and they, and and they make it to where, it, you know, seems justified. But at first, it was just like it just seemed like he was really trying to keep the guy out of the shit, man. Like he was really trying to keep him out of out of Detective Roach's hands. Yes, it's Loach. I said Roach because they're not playing because they're not fooling anybody. Bill Hader and you know, what I'm saying Alec, they're not they're not fooling anybody here. So. <laughs> I'll just, I'll just say, Stone I'll just sees say through it all. Yeah, this is what you're doing. <laughs> I'm sorry, Detective Roach. I mean, I, I would, I would, I would applaud you if you just went on ahead and said it. But no, it's fine. I, I still applaud you because it's clever. It's, it's an attempt at being respectful of the detectives and not totally like I fucking hate cops. You know what I'm saying? So I, I get it. I get it. I really do. But uh, even in season one, Barry's marine friend uh, Taylor. The guy who uh -oh. smokes weed, listens to metal, and watches porn all the time. He, like he sort of he's talking to Barry about Fuchs, and Barry's trying to pawn him off onto Fuchs so he can get out of it. She's like, yeah, you know, maybe uh, after this you can work for Fuchs and I can go do whatever. He's like, 
Work for Fuchs? Nah, fuck that. It's like, I, I, he only takes half. Half? This guy's scamming you. <laughs> like, even he kind of gets it. Like, half is kind of nuts. Like, yeah, I get Fuchs is the, the guy who sets things up and shit, but to go 50-50 when Barry's the guy doing the actual dirty work? I mean, but I mean, it's like I still think Fuchs does care about Barry on some level. So you don't, so you don't even think fifty. So, so you don't think fifty, fifty would be good enough in and like ride share. You know what I'm saying? Like, like for, like for example, ride share. You're the guy conducting the hits, as in the the, the drives and the drop offs, but they're providing you the the clientele at which to to complete those, you know what I'm saying, those pickups and drop-offs. I mean, not 50-50s, I mean, 60-40, you, you, you know, I mean... I mean, because Fuchs doesn't have the mental toll of, like, constantly taking those lives. Like, Barry's, like, as nuts as he is, you still see that the guy, he only likes killing so much. Like, he doesn't love it to the point where it's like, it's not taking a toll on him. Well, obviously he's not. He's not trying to negotiate. Whereas Fuchs just gets to sit in a hotel and just reap in the benefits, and but sometimes I mean, have his teeth taken out. But that's. You know. But I mean, some. But he's not. But but this is not the guy now. Now Barry by himself, as you know, what I'm saying as just a free, you know, what I'm saying as a free agent, you know, what I'm saying contract killer. I mean, would he be able to hold those meetings? You know, what I'm saying like completely. I mean, would he be able to set him up? I mean, like, he did pretty well with, you know what I'm saying, with the guy, you know what I'm saying, with, with the, even, even with a guy like No Hole, you know what I'm saying, Hank. But, I mean, would he be able to really connect those clientele, really keep things going if he wanted to do that? But he just doesn't have, especially when he doesn't really have the love for it. You know what I'm saying? He needed a guy like that to put the battery in his back, though, to even do this in the first place, in my opinion. It's true. He needed, just, he needed some. I don't know. I he, still think just fifty percent is too much. He wanted to yeah. be in the military. I mean, so so you understand being in the military means at some point, if wartime happens, you're gonna have to kill some people. So he wasn't completely off of the idea of killing some people for the right reason, which is we don't say, which is why he felt like he got into it in the first place because he was killing he was killing bad people for the right reasons, you know what I'm saying, and things like that. But. It's just it was just simply the fact that the killing just still you know what I'm saying was still bringing on some things for him that he didn't like, you know. Otherwise, you know he would he would still be okay with it. Obviously, the arrangement wasn't that untenable for him. It was just the fact that that there's something that that something still wasn't sitting right with him when it came to that situation. So I feel like it was he'd had maybe. One or several too many kills where it just it just wasn't justified. Well, you know, justified on some level, but not justified to an extent that satisfied him. So what do we think about? Okay, with what he was doing. So what do we think about the reveal? You know, what I'm saying in his in his military time about you know what I'm about that that dark thing. Uh, corn where he gall, uh, corn corn gall, in, I, I believe they call it. Oh, you're Af- talking about the Afghanistan. time. Where, you're talking about the time when he, um, where his friend Albert was shot in the face, and uh, he killed the wrong person to get revenge. Yes. Uh yeah. I mean, I killed was, the guy uh, and his and his wife. I think. Uh, I think he just killed the guy. Just yeah. the guy. Yeah, just the guy. Um, yeah, they they got they got in there before you know. Well, we, we'll never know. I mean, we, I mean, we see that that's that's the thing that's that's lovely about discussing this because we feel what we feel, and even if you do feel some things that you feel from like further shows, it's absolutely fine. But I mean, do you feel like that's something that could have happened? Um, uh, that he like if they hadn't busted in. Like he would have yeah. just kept going. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. He was in that sort of manic kind of state. I mean, yeah, re- really. Like he he was just he was just seeing red. Yeah, but I think 
I think potentially anyone inside. Uh, I don't know if, if there was kids in there. I think yeah, you know, I don't think you would have done that. But any adult person within that, I think if they hadn't busted in, it's anything's possible. Yeah, I agree. I think uh, I think if they had not gotten in there in time, or if they not gotten in there at all, he would have wiped out the entire household. Wow. Because he was just like, he was out of his mind at that point. Yeah. Now are we basing this. Now are we basing this on the on the all out stampede on the you know what I'm saying on the Chechnyans and the fucking you know what I'm saying um Burmese. Uh, Bolivia. Oh, the uh, the absolute eradication. Everyone in the monastery. Burmese. The end of season two. Well, I mean, he didn't just kill the Burmese. He killed the Bolivians, too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, because I, 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 I forgot about their I forgot about their whole hug fest that was turning into a, you know, say at least between Cristobal and, and no whole Hank that was turned into something. Can, well, can, I, I, mean, can I just, can I just <laughs> take a I minute? love you, man. Like, somebody's got to say it. I love you, man. <laughs> and just big hug. No, his, can, his, I, can I just take a minute to do something? Can I just take a minute? Sure. No ho Hank Cristobal 50-50. No ho Cristobal 50-50. Oh my God. <laughs> I mean the way that guy's the way that guy's leg went up on the hug, I mean it just it, it, it was just it was just turning into something for me. I'm I'm just saying. It was really turning into something. Oh my god. I'm just saying that, that leg going up in white pants, I mean it was just whew, it was just it was just wow. something. Wow. It was some but, other, it was it was something out of a Prince video. I'm just yeah, saying. Yeah. But no, I was just I, I mean, Barry took on that entire monastery by himself and managed to kill everybody. All uh, well, not all uh, all the Chechnyans he personally trained. Well, I mean, look. Which I think maybe I think, they kind of foreshadowed earlier when Hank's like, so, you know, are they, are they good? And he's like, yeah, they're as good as they're going to get. Which, in retrospect, I kind of took him as saying, like, yeah, not as good as me, but they're doing all right. Which no, you really see when he goes no, to no, that monastery. No, no, look, I mean, he didn't train them for very long, though. He didn't. No, it was only like... like from what we saw, only what three sessions or something like that. But yeah. it doesn't take it doesn't take long when you got you know saying when you got you know saying doofully loyal you know saying people with you know saying and you isolate them with a single minded focus you know what I'm saying they'll you know what I'm saying look anybody can be trained to do something you know what I'm saying if you just if you focus in on that for for a nominal period of time. I mean they felt like they felt like after a couple of months a sixteen. A 16-year-old kid, you know what I'm saying, from Newport News, Virginia, you know what I'm saying, after being trained maybe a month or two, you know what I'm saying, in, in Fort Jackson, South Carolina, might have been ready to go out there with an M16 and a grenade, you know what I'm saying, ready to do battle with people. I'm just saying. Hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying. Who, Charles? Me. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but it could have been Charles. Charles is a goddamn maniac, though. They know that blood and guts would spill <laughs> on the battlefield when Charles was there. God damn it! And he would say, "God damn it!" when it, when some got on his newly shined shoes. I mean, they're nice shoes. <laughs> I mean, I don't want blood stains on my nice shoes. I mean, that, do you have any idea how much of a bitch that is to get out of there? Well, trust me, pal. It's gonna take more than the spit shine, but I will say I need, this though: I need bleach to get that out of there. <laughs> Look, see, see now, and see and this, and this is why here, this is why people need more training. See, good killer on the field, bad laundry, ba bad laundry man, bad shoe cleaner. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Using bleach on black shoes. I mean, just I mean, you just you just he just didn't he didn't see the folly in that at all. You know what I'm saying? Not at all. You know what I'm saying? But absolutely fine. That that's what that's what friends are here for. 
to tell you never, never put bleach on your black shoes. You, 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 you just Who says for they're trouble. black? Who says they're black? If you're in the military, they are. Ah, man. So helping you learn I something new every day. Helping, helping you learn <laughs> something like, yeah, new. Get, yeah, these boots are cool, but I, I've got these. Like, I'm wearing this. And so oh, the, fuck. <laughs> There's fucking blood on them. And so to bullshit. End, and so to end this ridiculous military session, learn having somebody learn something new every day, even if it's something about the ridiculous government military, mission accomplished. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> fool won't get fooled again. All right. Now. Mm, right. <laughs> Okay, now, but um, I, I would definitely say that um, that I how can, how can I put this um, I just don't know, man. I like to believe that that he didn't go in there carrying something dark. Something dark happened in the military, but he went into the military for the right reasons. So I just didn't think. I mean, but I mean, I, I guess psych evals may have been on the weak. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and they may not have been able to, to pick up certain things in his personality that may have made him snap off like that. Sometimes people just get so locked in, man. It, it just it just happens. You know what I'm saying? I, You know, you guys will probably know more than me if they if they crack more into that. Did they crack more into his psyche? Did, did it go beyond the military? I'm willing. I'm, I'm willing to let that go. All right. Um, okay. So, um, would you see. say? Oh. Would, would, would oh. you? Would you say that? It, um, would you say that his that, 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 that his that his psyche that, that his issues go did it, did it start in the military or did, uh, did we reveal in other seasons that it goes beyond that it was before he even got into the military and he just didn't catch it? Well, the thing is, is oh, that. We don't really see much of his life before military until like later in the show. So I mean, so and so is there anything that gives you any illusion that it was that just that moment kind of kind of flipped the switch for him? That you know, what I'm saying that moment where Albert just kind of flipped the switch that where it, it was no indication that it had ever happened before. I actually think the moment where Barry started to break was not what happened to Albert. I think it was his first kill. The, the yeah, sniper. when he got that, when he got the uh, the thrill of just that feeling of like, oh shit. <laughs> yeah. Where he where not he only am I good at this, but I'm justified yeah. and yeah. That that was the moment where he started to break. It was his first kill. Hmm. <coughs> uh, excuse that, me. That's a very interesting God take. Bless you. And, or guys, don't die. Yeah, they do it. It's one yeah. <laughs> But um, I do have to say, like, <laughs> I think I even said to someone that I. That from the first episode of season one, I was like, "Yeah, I'm gonna fucking like this show." You know, it was just, it was just something about the way. I mean, just to, I just knew it was gonna be some shit. Like it was gonna, it was just to fucking stalk a guy and end up doing a scene in a theater class with the guy that you were sent to kill. It's just something like people who know how to do shit right. Could just think Bill Hader and his, you know, what I'm saying his his co-creator just knew that this shit would just would, would just hit the way that it actually ended up fucking hitting. I mean, I'm just I'm so glad that other people kind of saw the fucking genius, you know, in this damn show. I can't wait to see the pre, you know, what I'm saying the the you know, what I'm saying the next fucking season. I can't wait to see what happens fucking next. <laughs> it was one of those shows, like you know, some things take you a couple episodes. That one, I watched the first episode. I'm like, yeah, I'm in. I mean, gave I you everything say, you needed in that first episode. I gotta say that dash cam shit, boy. I mean, god damn, I just hate that type of shit. Like, oh fucking god, why has it always got to be this thing that's gonna linger somehow? You know what I'm saying? That fucking dash cam. You know what I'm saying? Fucking hell. 
But it always they go, lips, but, lipstick camera. But oh yeah, they call it. I, I hate ugh, weird. Why would fucking guys? You know what? You know what, guy? Hey, guys, live how you want to live. You want to wear makeup and and put on lipstick and, and pretend. Okay, there there is another name for a camera like that. It's called a dash cam. See, I tried yeah, right? that. I tried that, and I got corrected by your friend Damien here. No, my friend too. You know what I'm saying? But I got corrected by <laughs> that's Damien. What, that's what they called it in the show. <laughs> yeah, but I hate it when they called it that. I really did. That's why I call it the fucking dash cam. You put it on your fucking dash, pal. Like, who the fuck is going to believe that fucking lipstick? Just because it's got a thing sticking out of it doesn't mean it's lipstick. Who in the fuck are you going to believe is lipstick? Okay, I'm, I'm putting it up here and it looks like lipstick. And it's, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to put a li- I'm gonna put a camera up against my lips so I can put fucking like fictitious lipstick on my lips from a lipstick camera. Ooh, look at me. Look how pretty I am. Ooh. Or maybe or, or maybe putting or maybe putting your lipstick on the like on the top of the dash. You know, so it seems like a guy thing to do. You know what I'm saying? Like, see, a guy oh would do that. That must, God. that must be a lipstick. A guy, a guy would do that. Like, you know, what I'm saying? an actual lipstick camera is that, that's some fucking like James Bond shit. Like, it actually looks like lipstick. That's what I would call a lipstick camera. I would call that a dash cam. <laughs> Not if it's like a, an actual lipstick thing, but it's actually a camera. No, no, he, no, 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 Charles. He's not saying he's not he's not debating that that the thing on the dashboard looks like a lipstick. He's saying that if it looked more like lipstick, he would call it a lipstick camera. But it didn't look like yeah, it, if it like, like lipstick. Yeah, like that's if it was something that literally looked like lipstick, but it was a camera. That's James Bond shit. Otherwise, it's just yeah, yeah it's a fucking dash cam. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I get what you're saying now. Yeah, you gotta, yeah, you, you gotta make sure. So we gotta make, we gotta, we gotta make like, sure. Like, like, if it's a camera that literally looks like a stick of lipstick. And I've seen yeah, those. That, We've yeah, seen those. Yeah. We've all seen those. Yeah, yeah, that, we, yeah. We watched, we watched enough hokey spy movies to know what them shits look like. You know, yeah. what I'm saying, and you, and you could actually even work it. They actually make it to see you even work it to make it look like it's it, you actually looking working a fucking lipstick just to kind of just kind of throw people even more off. Yeah, I've, I've seen those. Yeah, they're awesome, but no guy. It or a pen work microphone it. or something. You know. It doesn't work when a guy has it, though. It doesn't work when a fucking guy has it. Just rem- remember that, fellas. Unless yeah, it you're depends how fruity they are. Well, you know, maybe <laughs> you know. Who knows, man? Who knows? You, you, you're right. John Wick had all John Wick movie had all kinds of uh, of hitters out there. You know what I'm saying? You had the bum society hitters. You know what I'm saying? Like, like why? You know what I'm saying? Like why does everybody take a different like? Like how do you contact? The bump society and, and and what and why would you use the bump society hitters over the Asian ninja? You know what I'm saying? Cut your throat hitters. Like like what would be the specialty like that they would provide that somebody else like I I want him hit on the subway like you know what I'm saying like thrown onto the tracks or something like and only the and only the bums can you know what I'm saying can get close enough to do that type of shit. like what what the fuck is the now that's one thing I will say about John Wick though. Like it's the different facets of like hitters. Like it's like what in the hell is the particular specialty that you would employ those particular types of you know members and whatnot. You know what I'm saying? Like it's just it's just that's always that's just, that's the question that I've always had. Can you guys provide any answers on the sidebar real quick? I was never quite sure exactly. I just thought it kind of. I was going to say it kind of blends with the just like the there's just hitmen everywhere and you don't know what they're doing, but they were a very specific like sect yeah. of the hitman world. So, and then you got, yeah, I'm and, not and, quite sure about that. And then you got this motherfucker's got to travel all the way to, you know what I'm saying, to to basically meet Dr. Shivago, you know what I'm saying, and give his damn finger in, in penance. You know what I'm saying? Like, who the fuck is this guy? Like, <laughs> I just gotta say, like they had some weird. Like I'm just trying to tell you, it's like I I don't I don't know how motherfuckers get into like th- these underworlds. I mean, if this if this kind of underworld actually fucking exists, but I mean, it's just like what in the hell, man? Like you just really gotta wonder. And then like the and then like the ninja clan that comes up, just cutting everybody up as you know what I'm saying as like as like the punishment squad for the. You know what I'm saying? For the, like, oh my God, for the table, as it were. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, bro. 
Like, what in the hell? Quite, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's, it's quite a movie that unravels quite an onion. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I, I do got to give it its fucking credit. They did unravel it kind of well. Now, let me ask you this, though, while we're on the sidebar. Does John Wick 4 do it? Or could there be another one coming? I don't think there's going to be another one. Uh, there is, though. That's oh. spoiling anything for Storm. I would say it ended perfectly, but apparently there are plans to do another one in the main series. So, so I don't know. So you truly mean if yeah. you never saw another one again, you would be okay with the way the, the way the movie ended? Yeah. I mean, I you? think it's a what world. You, they, they, you? They've set up a world where they could do spinoffs. Like they they've could do set up they could a, do pl- a pretty perfect they could do, world where they could, yeah, they could do plenty of spinoffs. But how John Wick Four ended without spoiling anything, I don't think they could do another one and have it make sense. Yeah, apparently it's in early production or something like that. So I mean, okay, I mean that that aside, do you agree with Charles? Pre-production. Yeah. I mean, so that fact aside, so you agree that that it would that it, that this upcoming one, if it goes on with Keanu Reeves, doesn't make much sense. Like I'm, I'm definitely down to see it. I'm just intrigued as to how it's going to happen. Because to me, like, yeah, Fall was a pretty perfect ending. Yeah, it was. It was a perfect ending. Hmm. Well, that is very interesting. To be honest, having found out that they're doing a fifth one, I'm actually kind of pissed off now. It's like, like really? So now they've gone into milking territory. Ooh. So, Possibly, because yeah, that was one of the few series I've seen where each movie really did just top the net the previous one yeah it's just like in the way the fourth one ended without spoiling anything was a perfect ending for the franchise they don't really need to continue the series they don't need to but when do we but but, okay but when does the world when does the new era or you know saying because you know you know that's what we all want everybody wants their own legendary thing everybody wants their own James Bond. Everybody wants their own Goonies. Everybody wants their own. You know what I'm saying? Like, well, like Stranger Things was like, was like, was like the new era's Goonies on steroids. You know what I'm saying? Like, like this. You know, everybody wants their own James Bond type of shit. So it's like we can't keep we can't keep it going until we maybe well, have another type of John, another I'm John fu- Wick. I'm fine with them doing spinoffs of the of the main series. I'm fine with that because the universe of which John uh, what Wick, ballerinas out next year, I think. Uh, uh, the, the, the universe, of, the universe of John Wick is very fascinating. Like the whole Continental Hotel, the table, all the different types of like like intricacies of their society is very interesting. Mm. They could do. There is plenty for them to work off of and expand on. So spinoffs, I am fine with, but mainline sequels, no. As but far they, as I'm concerned, the series is done. But who? But who else? Who else will be able to carry the mantle against against this table? And for what purpose, if not John Wick? See, that's what I'm like. Because, yes, yeah, spinoffs within the world, you've got a million different stories you could tell throughout time. Yeah. But to keep going forward with the main series, I don't know. Okay, let, let me Because this is like the way they set it up. Like, this is this is a society. It, to a point, it's almost like the fucking Assassin's Creed series. Like, this society of assassins has been. It's it's like a it's an almost ancient thing. Yeah, they they could but, like for like here's an idea for a spinoff they could do. They could do an origin of the table itself, like like yeah. how it was founded. They could do that, and and, and maybe tie into, you know, what I'm saying the, the how they found their way to the legendary John Wick. The, we could they could also do a the movie. Baba Yaga. They could do a movie about John Wick as a kid and how he entered the world of the table 
in that society. Or they could do a movie on how he met his wife. And the movie, and the movie could, uh, the movie could, uh, like end with the two of them getting married. They could, they could do that. Hmm. There is plenty of, uh, there is plenty of opportunities for spinoffs. And that is what I am fine with. But with mainline sequels, no, the, the franchise is done. Well, and let me it, ask you. It, if they do a John Wick five, if they do a John Wick six, seven, eight, nine, ten, whatever, it's milking at that point. It's well, let milking. me ask you. Well, let me ask you this: Do you feel like it, it, is it part of the perfection that was the ending of this movie and everything like that? Is that because the table actually gets their due by the time this movie ends? I really don't want to get into it because you haven't watched yeah, it's the like movie. How much, how much of an answer do you want? <laughs> yeah, I really yes. don't want to get into yes it. Or, yes or no. And your, and your viewpoint, yeah, no. they did. Not quite, they didn't. No. No, see, and, 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 that, and that to me, that, that's where the opening will always be. Because for a lot of people who are hero villain, who are hero villain movie fans, the movie is never the series is never over until the bad guy gets their due or the good guy goes away. You know what I'm saying? So, well, you know, that, that's, that's, I think the thing about the table though, is they've, well, it's not that they've always existed, but as long as they have existed, they will always exist to a point. I think I, I kind actually of way don't set that up. I don't think an organization like the table is ever going to get their due just because they're it's, too powerful and too widespread. Exactly. It's global. Yeah. But then that's it's like, let's say you take out the, the American arm of the, of the table. You've still got all these other different segments. Exactly. Yeah. Cut off one head, two more were to show up to take its place. Yeah, basically. It's basically Hydra. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> huh. Well, well put, guys. I mean, you still make it a very interesting situation, which puts it a very interesting crossroads. You know what I'm saying? At I mean, I'll be interested to see your thoughts when you see it. Yeah, yeah, you should watch it. I mean, I have, I have gone all the way up to that point, so might you feel like might as well, I guess, you know? Mm-hmm. So I, I watched the first three all back to back. It was cool, actually. It kind of felt like watching a. It was almost like watching a, most of a series or something. I was kind of yeah. in. A, I was kind of in a moment with it. So as they came out, you know, what I'm saying I, I tried to. I tried to get on them as quickly as I could. I guess I'm, I'm. I usually have a bad habit of not doing that. You know, I try to because, I don't know. Again, being that middle ground, being that older millennial middle ground type situation to where I was old enough to where the theater was like was still a big thing. You know what I'm saying? So it was still a big sacred thing to me to where it's like, man, if I if I'm willing to go to the theater like immediately to go and see something, I really, really like I had to say for the first time in a while, like fucking Evil Dead Rise really kind of had me to that charge to wanna okay. I want to fucking go to the theater and see that now. The Boogeyman just kind of got me feeling like that because fucking Stephen King is all promoting it and changing his voice in the damn commercial, you know what I'm saying, pitch for it. It's just like, oh, man, he's really fucking feeling like this is going to be some shit, you know? Good morning, V. Morning, V. I mean, Morning, I, like if if it hadn't come out so soon on demand, I would have gone to see Evil Dead Rise in the theater. That would have been the first movie I've seen in a theater in a long time. I just, you know, because it just really just, it just really felt like it might have had a little, and it, it again, again, it did, it did, it did. It still would have been enjoyable in the movie, even though I felt like there was some clever, there was some clever workarounds. You know what I'm saying? I still felt like enjoyable movie you know even though there was some clever workarounds but i just felt like again just kind of trailing 
again, because I, I mean, I love the the hell that we do this, man. I mean, that's why I fucking love doing this show now, even more now. But back to Barry, I just got to say, there were no workarounds on this one, man. At least from the first two seasons that I confirmed seeing and started getting into the third, man, I just fucking, I just fucking like the fucking balance on this. It, it just really, it just really works, man. That the odd. The eye working the people here, man. The cast that are working its way through here, man. It, it's it's just, just a great thing that they, you know, what I'm saying they're doing with this show, man. I mean, and can I take it that that the fifth season is the final season? The fourth was the final. Like it, it as of uh, two weeks ago, last week. Two, I want to say two weeks ago. Completely done. Let me see. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Where? I think it was two weeks ago because we took a My apologies. Off. My apologies. I thought I saw a five and it was only a four at the end there. My apologies. <laughs> that was my mistake. I, you know, there was a confusion only on my part. <laughs> Completely on my part. There was just, I thought I saw a season five and it was only up to season four. <laughs> so. To a point, you can kind of divide the show into almost two halves the second half being the end it's just like a yeah once once they get going with things it's definitely like it's shooting for an ending mm. hmm. well i could definitely whoa okay no, no problem yeah <laughs> pun unintended I'm, I'm definitely seeing what you mean i'm, I'm, I'm just by some, just just by some thumbnails, let's just say I'm I'm seeing what you mean, you know for sure. <laughs> but man, I gotta, I mean, I gotta say, what what do you think? What do you think could be next, man, for for a talent like Bill Hader? I mean, I was thinking the same thing the other day, and I'm not sure, but I'm really hoping he makes something else. I seriously think, man, that that if you. I think you guys are going to agree with me that in time that once that if we do that if you guys agree and we do the documentary now review and everything like that and you see the Jerry Wallach, you know what I'm saying, Hollywood executive, you know what I'm saying, like episode, like I really think that's something he should do something with, man. That shit would be fucking great. Like this that whole concept and how he does would be fucking great. Like how does a guy like make the worst decisions? You know what I'm saying? And Hollywood make a bunch of money, but just doesn't win the fucking Oscar. You know what I'm saying? Like, but makes the dumbest decisions ever, but still manages to make a bunch of fucking money. You know what I'm saying? Like, it just seems like it's a fucking awesome fucking idea. Mm. That didn't quite land on my own show. Oh my god. <laughs> I was pondering the pondering the question. I'm sorry. Yes, okay. yes, we're we're all pondering. Yeah. No, I think we're pondering. I think you mean slandering. <laughs> yeah, I think I think we're pondering. When's the day going to begin? It's like a, it's like eleven now, and well, I don't know is, what the fuck I just did, but I was trying to do floundering. Yeah. But even though we're not doing <laughs> the morning That's alarm this time, yeah. <laughs> but I th- floundering I th- like a fish. <laughs> I think at this point we're having fun. I mean, and. <laughs> I think we're still having fun, even though we're running out of gas. And I mean, and I think we just don't want to fucking, well, you guys don't. And I, and I appreciate you guys for not doing that. You know what I'm saying? Like, cause you guys could just go on and but you guys were willing, honestly, to, to break the, to break the two show, the three, the two halves down in a way season, season one and two here, and then three and four next week. And, and as an honorable mention, you know, just, you know, reviewing and discussing the, the losing, punishing, the the punishing pole. You know what I'm saying? The the Punisher pole. I, I, okay, yeah, that that sounds like a porn. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, but you know the Punisher pole. <laughs> it does. <laughs> Punisher pole. <laughs> it does sound like a porn. <laughs> <laughs> But um, yeah, we we can definitely do an honorable mention for the killer orgasms. Also. Yeah. Oh my god. Wow. <laughs> and then I think, 
And I think the theme that we were looking for, I was going to suggest was, you know, the variations or adaptations, you know what I'm saying, theme. <laughs> you know, we could talk about whatever, you know what I'm saying, however form that that has caught our eye in one way or another, either in a shitty, either in a shitty, I just want to basically take my time to, to piss on this show that I felt like, this adaptation that I felt like was shit. Like, for example, um, Friday Shadow the 13th. No, no, no. See, fuck you. There's no, there's no other. A- okay, you're. Oh, okay. I'm not. We have a ghost. No, no. I almost, no. I almost was gonna be an idiot on that one because that, because that is an adaptation. Because it was a book. It was a book that was written, and it became, a, and it became a show on Netflix. So there was an adaptation. I was about to be an idiot and say there was no adaptation. There wasn't any. I'm like, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. You know what I'm saying? Like, let Jeez, me pull that back. I'm saying so stupid. Yeah. Let me pull that back so I'm not an idiot. Most idiot. times, but not always. <laughs> like, Jesus, like, hey, oh, hey, oh, hey, oh, oh, hey, Stone. You pull that back. You sound like an idiot there, man. It's a fucking book written. It's a book written there, man. You know, you got to remember that. You know what I'm saying? When they adapt it to a show, it's a, you know, it comes from a book. You know, it's an adaptation. You remember that. You know, you got to keep it. It's from the guy. He doesn't know his yeah. literature. You got to keep that shit in your mind, son. You know what I'm saying? Like, fuck. <laughs> you know, like, geez. But, but anyway, I, I will say this. Like, for example, Friday the 13th, the series, it was an unexpected adaptation in its own way that was, it was fun. I thought it was going to be like Jason on TV. And it was like a haunted curio shop that all the damn mementos escape. And it was a other weird thing because it was like bad luck. So you have to think of like bad luck. The whole Friday the 13th derives from bad luck. And all these things are bad luck items. So you kind of like, okay, I, I get where you guys were trying to go. So you can't like, you can't get mad at us because we're Friday the 13th. We, hey, look, think about it. If you think about it, it makes sense. It's like, yes, it does. But you, we already have a whole legacy of Friday the 13th being about Jason. So don't try to play us like we're supposed to be expecting a guy in a hockey mask. Fuck you. You know what I'm saying? But it's like, like you get over it and you're like, okay, it's not that bad of a fucking show. But it's like, damn, don't play us like that ever again. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, like when you when you realize Nightmare on Elm Street happened, it was you, you, you expected Freddy and you got fucking Freddy doing a TV show. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay, thank you. You know what I'm saying? It was like, okay, it wasn't all that great. You know what I'm saying? That was that the was show. like a almost like a Tales from the Crypt kind of thing, right? But with Freddy. But yeah, but always him. It was always him at the end fucking somebody over. I guess in a in a humorous way. You know what I'm saying? But you know. <laughs> It was, it was, uh, 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 uh. but like I said, this is my point, like that adaptation, you know, okay. You know what I'm saying? Like the carry adaptation, variation, mm. you know what I'm saying? Chloe, you know what I'm saying? Wasn't there a carry that came out like within the last couple of years? Chloe Grace Moretz. I didn't, I, I wasn't sure. Uh, carry is a thing of doing less with more you got to be able to give something that's a little bit more see the thing is like big blow up big blow up you know i'm saying trying to trying to blow up more or trying to do more over the top on what was done previously i don't went for more creepy i don't went for more visceral i don't meant i don't went yeah. for more like fucking them up in the damn gym in the gym gymnasium where the dance was you know what i'm saying like really doing some shit you know what i'm saying like really give them some like really give them some serious fucking electrical burns when they grab that mic or some shit like like let's really let's let's really ramp this up a little bit if we're going to do that you know what i'm saying like let's really do some shit you know like come the fuck on like i see i mean we seen a damian omen like motherfucker got split in half by that damn glass we seen that shit like twice in fucking two different you know what i'm saying Dame, omen movies man motherfucker's getting cut in goddamn half like show me some shit like you like I'm all I'm saying is like, motherfuckers, people did less with more back in those movies in the '70s and the '80s. They did so much more with less, and they and they had so much leeway to get away with shit. You know what I'm saying? It was just a great fucking time <laughs> for horror movies, anyway. Not so much in race relations, not so much in women relations, but at least in movies, for horror, That's a whole it was other, a great time. All yeah. other argument, yeah. I'm, I'm just saying, you gotta make sure you you gotta make sure you 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 acknowledge people's heavy because goddamn, you know what I'm saying? You gotta acknowledge people's heavy, 
and then you cut that rock. Okay, so we can so we can soar and fly. All right, that's right. That's what we do. That's therapy. You know what I'm saying? We release the rock so we so the balloons can soar. Okay. That's right. Okay. God damn it, mirror smile, smile, folks. I'm just saying. I'm running out of gas, folks. I'm trying. I'm trying. Yeah. But I don't. But I don't want to give up too much more of the last two seasons of the show, and mm-hmm. I really want to talk more about Barry. But I'm trying my best to keep it up and and keep this thing going and and stay with these guys because these are like my fucking friends, guys. I mean, we we do shows, but then we we don't really go hang out and have beers and things like that. I mean, this is what we do. This is our social time. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So yeah. if it, you know what I'm saying? So it seems weird that we're like. Why, why do you guys just end the show? Because it's just not like we end the show and then we just go and do our thing. We'll probably talk a little bit more before we leave. This is just what the fuck we enjoy doing this. And a lot more now that, you know, you know, you know, <laughs> you know, you know, <laughs> you know, yeah, you know, um, yeah, I'm just saying. I'm trying not to do it because I don't want to seem obsessed because, you know, some people accuse that, 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 that we're obsessed and, and we have no content if we don't have them. We have no content. Somebody once said that. Some some guys who yank balls once said that about us. Some but we have who, no content. Who are known for yanking balls and, 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 and working on mountains of broke backs. You know what I'm saying? They, we, they, have you know, no, we have no content. Then, like, what are we doing right now? See, yeah, you're, you're you're right. I'm just saying, no, no, no. Trust me, trust me. See, trust me. I'm being sarcastic right now, sir. Charles, we're, we're, we don't we don't care about what they say. Their opinion means nothing to us. I was just being I was being facetious and sarcastic of the situation. They they, they mean nothing. We know what we do here, and and the people know what we do here. That's why we continue. That's why we continue to defeat them and the other and the other haters that would seek to challenge us. We continue to defeat them. We continue to do what we do, and we will get better. We'll promote more. We'll, you know, what I'm saying we'll come up with more ideas. We'll come up with better, you know, what I'm saying with, with, with better things, and we'll find our way to work around, you know, mm-hmm. footage. You know, what I'm saying and and work in more footage. And hey, thank you, um, V. You guys, you know, no problem. No, we don't. We don't need that all the time. We can we, we can snipe at each other every once in a while, but it's gonna be a little bit more polite, you know. It's and it's gonna be more polite from Jim too because he because he likes us, you know. He he likes us, man. You know what I'm saying? He actually likes us guys. He snipes at Damien because he sniped at Damien because only because he thought that Damien was just like he was holding back and he was, you know, what I'm saying he, he he was not jumping in the way you know what I'm saying he felt like. He should, and I was just trying to make sure that he knew, like other people knew that, that Damien is a timing guy. Damien is an in the pocket guy. Damien, you know, he's going to pick his spots and he's going to, he's going to jump in there and, 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 and do it like he wants to fucking do it. And I fucking like that. And you got to learn how to work with that. I know how to work with that. You know what I'm saying? I, I learned, I learned how to work with that, you know, a long time ago and it helped me and it, it helped me in being able to have a good working relationship with Charles here, you know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. and everything like from from a long time ago. So, and I definitely know how to work, you know what I'm saying, with people who have very who have very very sharp, very substantial, and very unique talents. You know what I'm saying, and that's what these two guys, you know what I'm saying, definitely fucking have. So, you know what I'm saying, kudos to both these fucking guys. You know, I I just I, I just think about. Other other content to work with them on, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like talking over the music with, you know what I'm saying, with Damien and myself. Charles always has a standing invitation to work, you know what I'm saying, to, to come in and be, you know what I'm saying, third mic, you know what I'm saying, whatever he wants to on that fucking show. And if ever Charles has an idea of a show that he would like to work, you know what I'm saying, maybe the episodes of Charlie and Blackie, you know what I'm saying, we can get that in production as soon as he would love to, you know what I'm saying, I'm just saying, Charles, it's just an idea, can I'm we, spitballing. Can we do I'm that just as like some kind of basic, like, flash animation? <laughs> I'm just spitballing, Charles. I am not calling it that. <laughs> oh, oh, he, oh, you wanted us to snipe Jim now. Oh, okay. <laughs> what do you mean? I've already said that he looks like Jack Black. 
You know what I'm saying? Now, look, if I want to summon the demon, I probably might say Bray Wyatt. But, I mean, I'm just, look, look, I, I, I want it to be a good day. I want to end the show on a good note. You know what I'm saying? I'm just, you know, I don't want to poke. I don't oh, want to poke the demon. Speaking of wrestlers, to go all the way back to the Punisher, I completely forgot it. Fucking, yeah. like, give me a second. So just for, yeah, a little bit of a callback. Seeing the fight with the Russian in Punisher. If it sounds like when he's he being killed, stabs okay. Kevin Nash. Yes. Is it up yet? I'm sure. St- I'm sure play. steroids helped. Yeah, I'm sure steroids helped help that. You know, but <laughs> just Hello? joking, Kevin Nash. We, we love you. Right. We love you. That, we love you, big sexy. That is a real knife. In that scene, it was meant to be a prop knife. The prop guy forgot to swap out the prop knife for a real knife. And Thomas Jane accidentally stabbed Kevin Nash. And Kevin Nash just didn't break character. Well, oh, I guess then then maybe I was What? Right. Then maybe I was right. Oops. I'm just saying, sometimes man, the, the, the natural Freudian slips kind of work into something that really oh, is what? wrong. What? Yeah, <laughs> Thomas Jane actually stabbed Kevin Nash. And Kevin Nash just fucking... Looked at him like that. Steroids, they're mm-mm good. And his compensation was, uh, I think the crew treated him to some, some cold beers afterwards or something like that. Maybe some flank steaks? St- steroids, <laughs> they're finger licking good. <laughs> Jesus, I mean, look, I, I got to say this too, man. This is, this is the thing I got to say. That like, there is... Real quick, there is a point to be made that some wrestlers say that it's weird that you do that, that, that what they normally do for a living requires them to be, you know, saying seen, athletic, performing sports entertainment. But yet, what I see categorically all the fucking time is that when they do a movie, they are like pro, pro wrestlers who have done movies are like so much bigger than what they are when they actually wrestle for their respective promotions. I've seen it with Roddy, I've seen it with Rowdy Roddy Piper. Yeah, I think he gained with Terry Funk. I seen it with, you know, it just happens. Like they get they get so much fucking like Kevin Nash so much fucking buffer. And I've never seen him in fucking this movie and in fucking the longest yard. Yeah. I mean, he I've never seen that buff in a long ass time. I think he gained I think it was twenty pounds or maybe more for this movie. I mean, but it just seemed like, tw- I mean, 20 pounds was really, I mean, but damn, I mean, like, I've seen Kevin Nash. If you, I mean, it doesn't sound like a lot, but it, it clearly makes a difference. I guess so. But I guess when you have more time to. I, I, to I could be wrong. It might train. be more, but. Oh, okay. Uh, still, what happened? Still there? I don't know. Oh, shit. Yeah, like, <laughs> what could have been a potentially fatal incident? Turned out to be just yeah. one of the coolest scenes in that movie. Yeah, he and they kept stabs him, and he just movie. looks at him like, what? Yeah. They kept it in the movie. Holy shit. And I'm look. I was looking at the picture, and I decided to see like where they, uh, where he got stabbed. Uh, so it looks like he didn't get hit in any of the vital organs. So not the lung or anything it, like it that. Was, it was like somewhere like, I guess, between the shoulder, so, like somewhere so in the yeah, shoulder, I guess. Yeah, somewhere in the shoulder. So yeah, he would have been fine. Some some stitches, and yeah, he'd be fine. Yeah, go a little so, bit lower. It's gonna be a bad time. A little bit lower. A little bit lower. He might have got. He he probably would have been fucked. But um. So speaking of sports and entertainment, guys, is there any sport that you guys have become any way interested in? I mean, I'm a hockey guy, but uh, okay. I've always loved basketball. Who doesn't love basketball? <laughs> I, don't know. I, love- I used to play basketball and football as well, Australian football as a kid, but. I don't so, know, I just so soccer once it became or, a, or rugby. Neither. 
closer to rugby, but not quite. Australian rules football. I used to play as a kid. And then I grew up, got a bit fatter, and loved video games more, and left behind. (laughs) But what's Australian rules football? I'm, I'm very interested in that. Just look it up. <laughs> I both don't have a good explanation and also nobody wants to hear it. <laughs> really? There is a wonderful thing that you can access on this. In this little thing that I like to call the internet. It's called Google. <laughs> it's pretty oh. new and crazy, but. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's so crazy. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. <laughs> well now what you're gonna do is that you force me now to um to try to maybe give my either I'm going to you know no maybe no no this this is way too fun right now. So I got when I'm having way too much fun, I can't give the Australian accent. I gotta give the New Zealand accent. Oh, you so, piece wow. of garbage. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you, so, sir? So, Australian Rules Football. Also called, also called Australian Rules Football. <laughs> oh, Aussie Rules. Wait, what? <laughs> I was going to <laughs> Almost simply, football or footy. You, actually, you actually call it footy? You actually call it footy? People do. I, I don't think I've ever uttered the word once in my life, but yeah, people do. It's a contact sport played between <laughs> two teams of 18 players on an oval field, often modified cricket ground. Points are scored by kicking the oval ball between the central goal post with six points or between a central and outer post with one point, otherwise known as a behind. So you kick the ball into the behind. Awesome. It's fucking awesome there, pal. <laughs> I mean, we're starting off we're starting off aces here. <laughs> I mean, Australian Australian rules football is like is like a gay house on fire. <laughs> yeah, we kick the fucking ball into the behind and domination. <laughs> Those fucking cunts go down. <laughs> Dude, in general play, players may position themselves anywhere on the field and use any parts of their bodies to move the ball. Holy fucking shit. <laughs> I can pick up the fucking ball with your butt cheeks. <laughs> just, just let them take it from me then. They're fucked. Fucking, fucking Australia. <laughs> They talk intense, <laughs> but they play football the funnest way ever. The funnest way ever, I swear. They talk in, intense. In the bro. shortest shorts you've ever seen. They talk intense, but play football with them. You'll you'll know different. Bro. You'll know different. <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> Throwing the ball is not allowed, and the players must not get caught holding the ball. Oh my god! Now this is <laughs> holy fucking <laughs> yeah. You're touching the ball. What are you, puffed up? <laughs> this is a mind melter here. Because you got to be able to kick this ball between two posts. I mean, you, you you can't get caught holding the ball. Whoops, got you. Holy fucking shit there. <laughs> Holy God. <laughs> man, I got to say, you were right, man. That is, no, no, you were right about, it's, it's quite a lot to explain. But I think people would have wanted to hear this. Oh, my God. <laughs> you did a... You did well. Okay, let me see. Possession of the ball is in dispute at all times, except when the free kick or mark is paid. Players can tackle using their hands or use their whole body to obstruct opponents. Wow. Man, I mean, this is quite a fucking sport. And look, I see this here. Now, this is what I see here. It tells me a lot. It tells me a lot. Somebody is Michael Jordaning over, you know what I'm saying? Someone else there, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> He's got his knee right to his fucking chin. You know what I'm saying? I mean, this is I mean, this is really something that lets you know what kind of things we have going on in this damn American rules football. 
I mean, which I can oh, excuse me, Australian rules football, which I'm definitely saying yes. when you talk about when you talk about Sandlot football, Sandlot football that I used to play, I'm feeling very reminiscent. I'm feeling this very reminiscent no, of what we used no to do. Protective gear there. No, not not at all. This guy's got a tank top and he's Michael Jordaning and he's just I mean, my goodness. Very nice. I mean, very nice uniforms, by the way. Both I mean both fucking like, face. And I gotta say, both uniforms, very nice. Very nice. See what I mean about the short style? Very uh, well, short. What well, well yeah, you know, yeah. No sequins though. They're they're nice, but I, I do see wristbands. I mean I do see armbands and, and leg bands and you know. So, you know, there, there's some things to be to be criticized and, and poked sure. on at, but somewhat silky shorts. <laughs> It say the sports origins can be trained to football matches played in Melbourne, Victoria in 1858, inspired by English public school football games, seeking to develop a game more suited to adults in Australian conditions. The Melbourne Football Club published the first laws of Australian football in May 1859. Like, wow, I got to say, man, very interesting sport indeed. That is, I mean, you know what? And that is something that I would definitely say that that's a perfect way to invite you on to yay and sports, man. We got to fucking talk some more about Australian rules fucking football and your, and your history in that. And maybe how can we get some games going? <laughs> now I know that guy, now I know that guy seems very fit. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to discount that guy. Seems very fit there. But Charles, I got to say, man. Yeah. I see your knee in that guy's face also. Now, you're much more pale than that guy is, but I still see your knee in that guy's face. I'm just saying. I still see that. I see, I see you doing this. I see you being the superstar in, in Australian rules football. That this guy is right here. I don't even like playing sports, dude. Oh, well. I like watching hockey. That's the only sport I like. But, I mean, I don't like playing sports. <laughs> and you didn't tell me you wouldn't want to get out there and slam a guy's head, you know what I'm saying, uh, into, the, into the glass partition. You mean to tell me that doesn't, that, that the thought of that, the feel of that doesn't just, uh, doesn't just interest you a little bit. Doesn't pique your interest just a how, tiny bit. How do I say this without sounding like a serial killer? I, I, um, I, pick I up was the ball and I'd be out of breath. I would suggest mention no. <laughs> I, I would get the chance to kick it. It would help me. I, it, personally, it would help me if you would mention no food or wine. Definitely do not. Definitely do not salivate after it. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Uh, true. True. <laughs> All right, but no. Look, look. Yeah, no, that that all, laugh. I wouldn't. I wouldn't do that laugh afterwards either. That, all, that. all kidding aside, I am not like physically fit, so I don't even play sports to be honest. But I mean, I don't mind going to a hockey game and just watching hockey. I mean, hell, I went to a hockey game recently. Like I think it was like about two months ago. And but, uh, but wouldn't but wouldn't slamming a guy's head up against the up against the glass partition, take a different feel than just watching the game. I mean, you mean to tell me you wouldn't just want the chance to skate out there and just clink, clink. I mean, come on. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Bless you. Slamming, slamming your, slamming your substantial male body. You know what I'm saying? Into another man and having him eat the fucking wall. No, not really. I mean, I'm fine with being a spectator. I don't really want to be a participator. And oh, so I guess the serial killer thing you didn't you enjoy seeing other people brutalize themselves for your pleasure. I was kidding about that, dude. No, it's fine. It's fine. <clears throat> I was no, kidding. No one is judging you at all. Call nine one one. No one's judging you at all, sir. Yeah, yeah, of course. Okay. Oh, boy. Like, 
Yeah, 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 yeah. Let me, let, let stupid let me internet go. crap that. All I heard yeah. Yeah, was let me go, let me go to Charles going, oh. Uh oh. Oh, I think his internet crapped out again. Uh, yeah. Let me go talk to my no, psychiatrist. I was just... like, <laughs> let me go talk to my psychiatrist, Hannibal Lecter, and let me go get some advice from him. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, that joke definitely, definitely doesn't help you with the non-serial killer campaign. I, again, kidding. <laughs> I just, <laughs> yes, yes, sir. I'm, I'm being sarcastic. I'm sorry. I, I need to work on that. Apparently, I need to work on my sarcastic because people are not smelling the sauce like they used to. I, oh, I, I, I get that. I get that. You know, Put it's just a crow, Mr. Stoneblock. Yeah, that's right, Stoneblock. Or damn it, I should have. You know, you know, what I should have did. This is what I should have did. This is what I should have did if I was thinking. This is what I should have did. Give me a second. I'm just realizing what I should have did. No, uh, oh, Stone, don't steal my bit. No, uh, no, no, no. no. I'm not. Basic bit. That I was really hoping. <laughs> I, I was like, if, if. If I come in and I see no ho Charles, I'm going to be so disappointed. <laughs> Trust me, man. I'm, I'm but also be, happy. You know, I, I might be. I might be a uh, old boy first. They call. They call <laughs> him the. Over, they man. call him the king of Suckballs Mountain. You know what I'm saying? I, I think I might be that guy. <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like if I if I suck balls, you're the king of Suckballs Mountain. Like I like that guy. <laughs> wow! <laughs> but this has been a pleasure, yeah. folks. What is here, folks? First, folks. I want to be the Stop guy that Mike. calls you. These guys who suck balls. Hey, wait a second! Wait a second! See, see, see that that that, that whole now now you now you end up breaking up and it's, and it's sounding even it's sounding even more suspicious what you're saying even more than what you were trying to say because I get what you were trying to say but now it sounds even weirder now it's all broken up like that now it's more mystery to that and it's not even anything like uh <laughs> let me stop not that being gay is anything wrong with being gay okay not that there's anything wrong with that. If you like, if you like guys, you like watching guys who who suck other guys' balls. I mean, that's that's up to you. Oh no, I'm oh. just saying. I'm just saying that if I was gonna be a character on the show, I would probably be Marsigard, Mars Mars Bard, or something like that. I forget his name. He called, you know, what I'm saying he called oh, Noho Hank. He was like, he said that he said all his guys, all you know, all his crew suck balls when it comes to like being assassins. You know, what I'm saying you seen them, it's like you know, if I suck balls, you're King of Suckballs Mountain, you know, and but but nothing wrong with wanting to see guys suck balls. That's what you're into. I'm, I'm just not into seeing guys suck other guys' balls and of course not, and, you know. But yeah, that's the weird way we're going to end it. I guess I, I guess it's kind of I'm, I'm going to so that my... so we end things on talking about dudes <laughs> sucking other dudes' dicks. No, we didn't. But now you. You know what I'm saying? Now, now you just said hey, that. No, no, no. No, you brought it up. Balls, pal. Balls. Balls. <laughs> balls. <laughs> balls. It's just, see, we were, we were. Balls, man. I'm just saying. A very short, a very short conversation on balls. And, you know. I just got you to say balls four goddamn times. <laughs> Oh, I'm such a fucking child. God damn it. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> oh, my God. He's enjoying this way too much. Are you okay, sir? <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. Oh, my God. Let, let's end it on that. Oh, what a my monster. God. My God. <laughs> I'm laughing too fucking hard. <laughs> oh my god, what a monster you! Jeez, man. Oh man. He enjoyed oh. that. Oh god, he enjoyed that way too fucking. Oh. Just he enjoyed just being a little manipulator and a mastermind, huh? Jeez. <laughs> fucking. 
<laughs> oh man! My I goodness, crack. man! It I crack, me... I crack myself up sometimes. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure to agree. Yeah, it makes me think of something deeper going on with that Blackie situation. Now I know. Oh my you know, god! So... <laughs> oh, I am never calling it that. Come on, man. Come on, it's fine. It, it's it's fine. We'll just call it this. We'll just call it the substance, the presence. I'm fine with calling it that, but I'm not calling it the other thing. Blackie. Okay, no problem. Oh my god. Glad you're back, man. I'm, I'm glad you're back for us to end it right at the three-hour mark, or somewhat at the three-hour yeah. mark. Something now. on my end is being a jerk. Not in my end. No. On my end. Well, you. No problem. No problem. Yeah, yeah, we get it. Someone, someone's trying to do butt stuff. I got it. No, okay, so yeah, yeah you guys wouldn't call it. In my head is my asshole. Okay, so you got, so you, you guys usually, okay, you guys are like that because I thought you guys would call it your boot. You know what I'm saying? So you guys don't do that. Okay, no, no, no problem. Okay. No. Okay, okay, British. The, the British one you call that's the trunk of the car, right? It's not the. Okay, I don't, man. Look, it's not the time to be getting into all of that. That's I guess we call it too. I've always, I, I've always said trunk. I like trunk more. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's you, right. You know, I, I always know somebody's way of saying <laughs> ass, will. but you know it's it's, it's fine. <laughs> but you know what I'm it's just you know okay fine. But we'll folks, we thank you so much. I thank these guys. You know what I'm saying every time we come and do this fucking show because I enjoy doing this show. My only hope, my only hope, and my only wish is that we can make. A living off of doing this creator shit. I will keep on trying. We will keep. I will keep on trying with these guys. So until next week, where we will be doing the last two, another bittersweet ending of a great show that we've enjoyed. You know, and you know, it's. I'll be glad to discuss it, but I'll be. I'll, I'll be hating to see that there'll be no more shows after that. But um, and then we'll give some honorable mention to the Punisher and give some conversation to some other adaptation of content that were near and dear to us or maybe some that was maybe you know a very poor display a very poor try of content that's that that we hold you know in high regard whatever that whatever form that comes in i'm glad to discuss it with these guys especially and you with you guys listening thank you for the four to five or so people that decided to get up in the morning and watch us and stay with us through this time. Thank mm -hmm. you for the hopefully many more that will watch and enjoy what we have to say before. Hopefully those people who have never heard of Bill Hader, I, I'm not sure how, but I'm sure it's entirely possible. Um, and maybe never heard of Barry, please take your opportunity, watch the show, take, take, it, take an opportunity of these seasons. They're very good watches. And, you know, we try our best to, to why you know what I'm saying to get on the shows, not the shows that we know we're gonna like, but shows that we feel like we might like or at least interesting enough to give a chance at watching. And whether they're good or they're bad, we're gonna tell you. Our ego's not involved to tell you that because something that we thought was gonna be good is not good, you know, we'll tell you. Because even if it makes us look like, hey, we were wrong about that, we're willing to speak on it. You know what I'm saying? We're willing to give it a shot. And see what and, and see if it works out, and if it doesn't, we'll give our honest assessment, you know, and everything like that. I enjoy this. We roll the dice, we speak on content, and sometimes we review and give and give reflection to content that was so great, so legendary that we wanted to give it its due just one more time. If nobody else does it, you know what I'm saying. So that's kind of what we do, and I say that to mean, <clears throat> I say that to mean that maybe just maybe we need to do a saw review is that what we suggested before a, I, a saw review did we suggest that or was it another or was it another long no no excuse me i was going to bring it up to you guys but what we were going to review what we were talking about reviewing was the halloween original you know say original installments review we Damien and I were speaking about that a little bit. I want to know what you thought about that. Um, Halloween, I've never actually watched. Um, oh, wow, I've never watched any of them. Um, this is fun. This will be fun. Then this is really then this is really happening. It's, it's been floated. 
Yeah, I've never watched them. I mean, I would, I might be willing to check them out. Uh, but the, I heard, I heard, I heard that the sequels were shit. The original. Okay, look, what, we, what we're gonna do? See, now this is where we become smarter about what we're doing here. Okay, so it one, might so original one, original two. He'll be back by the time we're done. Original one, original Halloween one, Halloween two. Halloween three, no. Unless you want to watch Season of the Witch for your own uh, for your own amusement, you don't have to though. You know what I'm saying? Then, because then we get back after after Season of the Witch, we get back to Michael Myers Halloween, and about up to six, and then we leave it alone. Because after that point, it really does get shitty. Okay, um, <clears throat> well, I mean, I know that um, the new Halloween movies that they did recently completely ignore all the old sequels and are direct sequels to the original Halloween. Because there's an interesting take that we was discuss that, that we were discussing before when we did when we did the morning alarm show, where we were discussing Halloween in the way of the theory from the original series. See, for me personally, I used to hear things about Sam Hain and about how certain rituals and certain like old world, you know, what I'm saying, old world, you know, what I'm saying villages and whatnot that that was said around the time of Halloween or All Hallows Eve or whatever that to appease the gods or what have you that a family member would be selected to sacrifice all the other blood members of his bloodline family to appease that particular you know what I'm saying god and whatnot at that particular you know what I'm saying, at that point and it kind of ties into you know michael myers you know say whole issue in halloween like his whole motivation his whole thing people get in the way they get done it's not like he's going to ignore anybody else that gets in his fucking way but the main point is to slaughter his entire bloodline and at that point he'll be done you know what i'm saying but, but you know what i'm saying but that's the whole thing that surrounds around it and there's the cult of thorn that you know what I'm saying that plays that plays its part in this whole situation that we found very interesting and we were kind of talking and discussing was it that or was you know what I'm saying and, and Jim being the devil's advocate a lot of times maybe it seemed like what if what if this whole what if this whole thing is some sort of like curse or some sort of spirit some sort of demon or whatever you know what I'm saying whatever that's like that's like taking over and like maybe Michael Myers is the hero and he's trying to end and he's trying to kill end uh you know what i'm saying by basically killing his bloodline and make sure that it doesn't you know what i'm saying spread or whatever but i just mm, you know i don't you know there's no way he can be seen as a hero you know what i'm saying in my eyes i'm sorry you know what i'm saying so that's why i feel like this whole sam hayne thing works a little bit more to me but we're, and that's the whole thing we we should review it and figure out what's going on with that so that's why i think so that's why i think basically and damien i want to see if you agree with me on this um that's why i think for the original series, for the original installments, Halloween one, Halloween two, no Halloween three, only as extra credit, and then four, five, and six, and then we should be done. All right. What now, do you say, Dam What do you say, Damien? Are you there? He might be having uh, more internet trouble. Oh, okay. Uh, but, I mean, I would be willing to check out the Halloween movies, but I agree with what Giovanni is saying um, in the chat. Uh, all or nothing. And I think we should watch all the Halloween movies. Like, just watch every single one of them, even the bad ones. We should watch them all. You see, he, he actually said that? Yeah, he, he said all or none. Oh, my God. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Why do you fucking say that at? Yeah, right underneath V's comment about actually enjoying Rob Zombie's remake. Oh, God. All or none? Yep. Oh, I see it now. Man, you are being such a dick. Yep. No, such a dick, though, man. N given how I feel, given how I feel about fucking... Oh, oh, oh. And given how I feel about the uh, about the horrorization of fucking Loomis and Rob Zombie's movies, man, I mean, seriously, man, 
and then the John and then the John Woo treatment and the fucking you know what I'm saying and, and the fucking more recent movies. I mean, uh, 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 uh. look, look. I know what happens at the end of the more recent movies. I decided to spoil myself and just to see, well, just to see what happens, so I know everything. Yeah. So, um, I don't even really need to watch them, but I'm going to just for the sake of just like completionism. But um, just save it for the just, just save it for the end, and if you have enough time, yeah, we'll we'll we'll, we'll just we'll, we'll do it that way because I really feel like the important the important conversation to have because it was the only it was the only set of installments that tried to offer something that was hella interesting in my opinion. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Some some you know what I'm saying some sort of secret some sort of secret organization that's like basically operating on little kids and getting you know what I'm saying and getting them to be mind you know what I'm saying to be mind numb monsters you know what I'm saying basically taking out their fucking bloodline kin you know what I'm saying as some sort of like sacrifice to to you know what I'm saying to this god you know what I'm saying that they're still attached to I mean it's it, it's it's some weird shit that you know what I'm saying that they kind of unwrap you know right. really off of off what you or what you thought was a typical slasher movie you know yeah. All right, but it's just if we're going to do the Halloween movies, I also do want to watch the Saw films again because I haven't seen the newer ones that came out after the final chapter. I didn't Ooh, see the I yeah. did I did not see um the I can't remember the one that came out after that. Um uh crap, what was it called? I can't remember the name well, of it. But well, maybe um, Jig, I know Jigsaw has happened at least at one point. And then we had the spiral, you know. Then we had spiral. That's right. J there was jigsaw, and then there was spiral. I never yeah. saw. I never saw those ones. I never saw either one of them. But I did see all the saw movies that led up to the final chapter. I did see all of those. Gotcha. Uh, but I did not see jigsaw or spiral. And you say you're willing to go. You willing to deep dive into. A review of all of these, eh? So, yes. Was that the Chris because, Rock one? I think Spiral. Uh, uh, yeah, Spiral is the Chris yeah. Rock and, one. Yeah. And Samuel Jigsaw, Jackson, yeah. by the and Samuel Jackson, by the way. I just want to be, yeah, quite clear. But, he I was mean, in that movie. And but he, look, I mean, I I love the Saw movies. I I loved all of them, even the bad ones. I thought were good. Well, it, and it, it definitely doesn't lack for entertainment value. But see, when people start to start to think they know a, a, a series or something like that, they start to become critical of like what they could have done to evolve, you know what I'm saying, the franchise and things like that. So, but it's hard to even figure the situation because you, I mean, when you're still unraveling the web of the fucking timelines, you know what I'm saying? Really? What the I, is going I on, never you know saw that saying? promoted that he was in it. Look, I mean, when yeah. it comes to, when it comes Die to spectacularly. Jigsaw, I'm when sorry, it comes anyway. to Jigsaw, I yeah, did... Like, it, it's a, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, no, no. You're good. Um, I was just going to say, I did end up spoiling the end of, of Jigsaw. So I know what happens at the end of it. I know that uh, how they explained uh, like that. Apparently there was another apprentice uh, aside from Mark Hoffman and Amanda Young that was introduced in the, in the mainline movies that there was a third apprentice that came out of left field. Which I thought was incredibly stupid. Um, not, not really. If you if you look at it from the if you look at it from the shining perspective. Uh, and then uh, he was all. Then again, he was always the assistant. He was always mm. the apprentice. Yeah. You know, I'm sorry, I used the wrong word, but you know, but you, but you, you know what? You, you, you you're sharp, man. I, I like that. Always yeah. fucking sharp. Yeah, I fucking used the wrong word, but I was, I, I was still hoping I was still charming and clever on that one. Yeah, but no, I mean I'm gonna watch it just because I want to see more of that universe because I am a big fan of the whole idea of the Jigsaw Killer. I always found that character interesting. Yeah, and I, and I guess it will be an, I guess it will be pretty fun to unravel the timelines and and. And kind of keep and kind of get to what we know, and you know what I'm saying? Because yeah, sometimes, sometimes I think I have a hold on it, and then sometimes it kind of takes. I, I, I kind of feel like I lose the thread, you know what I'm saying? So it would be fun to fucking get back into it and see what's what. So what comes first? Um, 
what what should come first? Should we, you know, what I'm saying, should we do the Halloween because we because we spoke on it first? Should we do saw both of those things are well. Halloween. The- the thing is, is that I've already watched most of the Saw movies already, but I've never watched any of the Halloween movies. So I think we should do Halloween first because I've never I've never seen any of those. So this will be a new experience for me. Movie. So one movie a week. Uh yeah. I think we should do one movie a week. Okay. Yeah, that we yeah, do, that it gives us plenty to talk about over the course of several weeks. Yeah, especially where these assholes are, are requiring. Like, are, are, do we agree to that? Do we agree to all or fucking nothing? Because if we don't all agree, we don't have to fucking do that shit, man. I mean, are, are we agreeing to all or nothing? Look, I want to see all of it, including the bad ones, just so I can say that I did. So, even Halloween three. Yes. Yeah, see, I, I did see. I even put season of the witch as a fucking extra credit part, but it's like, you know, <laughs> I don't remember hating it, but I've seen nothing but this movie sucks over the years. Like I haven't seen that for probably twenty years or so, but I didn't remember right. hating it. It's just it obviously sucks. it's not the same. I, I su- think, yeah, it sucks because it's not Michael Myers. That's why it sucked. Yeah, that's that's why it sucks. It's a very different thing. But it doesn't suck. No, it, it sucks because they because they were ending Michael Myers and, and they did that shit in that bullshit way. But it, it sucked. But when you sit with the movie and just watch the the movie, doesn't fucking suck. Okay, it's got my man from fucking. It's got my man from fucking. Uh, oh my god, Night of the Creeps in that shit. You know what I'm saying? For one, I want to watch these movies at least once in my life just so I can say that I did. Awesome. Yeah, and that's, and that's why we're here for you. That's why yeah. we, that's that's what that's why you that, that's why you found yourself in the right place with the right people that can that, that are willing to indulge that because we don't fucking mind doing that too. So awesome! I'm, I'm glad I'm glad that you want to, and I'm glad to be a part of helping and making that happen because these yeah. movies do need to be seen. And the theory, I think you are one person that I also feel like should be included in this discussion. I think that once you see what I'm saying here about the Sam Hain shit. And how and I'm saying, but and I think they, I think they gave up on it. I think they, I think that's why they destroyed it the way that they did in the fucking in, in the fucking later movie. I think they destroyed it. They made it stupid, and then they just, and then it completely had Jason just annihilated because they just couldn't, they just didn't know how to move on that fucking story. You know what I'm saying? It's weird, but it was something there, man. And if they had been thinking a little bit more, they could have had something on that for real. But mm-hmm. you just, you just, I mean, again, we're, we're gonna do this. I, I, th- I think we've. I think we've all come to our agreements. Uh, you just tell me what you think. You just like I say, you definitely tell me what you think. Uh huh. Yeah. So, because I'm just like, Egh. all or nothing. Oh my god, guys! I mean, you really have to understand H two O. You know what I'm saying? I mean, fucking. <laughs> oh my god, Halloween. Was that the one with the the Buster Rhymes? Oh uh, no, that's Halloween Resurrection. Yeah. yeah. Oh God. See, yeah. Ah, Resurrection. Yeah. Either, either way, man. E- either way, we're both losing. Either with LL or Buster Rhymes, we're, we're, we're losing in rap. We're losing in rap cameos in Halloween. You know what I'm saying? We're just losing. You know what I'm saying? I'm sorry. So wait, but, so Resurrection was like the reality show kind of one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And you know. So then you have, of course, you're gonna have Rob Zombie's version that we have to that we have to get through, and get through the the, the whoring of Loomis, and then we have to get through Danny McBride's whole thing, and yeah, and, and then we get John Woo, you know, what I'm saying in, in that series, it's just you know. I remember hearing good things about the first two, just not the third. Which one had the John Woo shit? Because I mean. That I, I, I haven't that, actually seen them yet. That, that that shit didn't do a lot for me. Like the, that that to have them and to do that. You mean like I mean, doves and a shootout in the church? I'm talking <laughs> about. Okay, maybe Different I maybe I went off. the wrong way with that. Um, maybe, yeah, maybe I went the wrong way with that. I'm because I mean, well, in John, well, they do have some sword shit. I mean, the, just the way he kind of got up and was really just kind of just like, yeah. He, he was he was in a he was in the middle of a circle, just kind of like horror action movie people. You know what I'm saying and shit. So it was just weird. It that that whole situation was kind of weird. They had him, and they just 
I don't want to ruin too much more, but it, yeah, please just take your time and enjoy the sickness. Get down with the sickness and you tell me what you think. You, yeah, you know what? As a matter of fact, that will be. And I think we should make a poll on that, too. Which series do you think stands up? Which series do you think stands up? The better series. Now that, that we're going to do one or the other, because, I mean, again, we've been roped into all or nothing. But um, I'm just saying, just do a poll what people think. The better series. The original setup. You know what I'm saying? The original, I mean, uh See, and that's the and that's the bad part. Because the original, the original installments, we have to take into a fucking account. The H2O and the resurrection has to be attached onto that. So we but should, I gotta, should we say like one to six? But I gotta but but I gotta say, you know what? It's fine. Because it's all or nothing. So those gotta be attached and they gotta and they gotta be penalized. So the series is gonna be penalized as a result of that. But I gotta say, I'm very confident that we won't lose to fucking Rob Zombie's version because simply, if for nothing else, the the whoring of Loomis is always gonna be a fucked up, you know what I'm saying, part of that. That's always gonna bring it way down. I mean way the fuck down. May I say you just you just sold me on 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 the all or none. Uh, that that Giovanni handsome handsome devil suggested. What the hell? Oh my god! I hate Damn. that Giovanni guy. He's such a. Joke. He's very handsome. I masturbate to him. Yeah, I'm sure. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah of course you, you do. Yeah, of course you do, <laughs> Jim, who is definitely not Giovanni. Not at all. But um. I love see. your sarcasm, by the way. You just said it there, though. <laughs> you get to mark these things against the franchise. And we get to argue about Resurrection. I think that's one of the strongest of the original franchise. It's so clever and original and ahead of its time. I I do remember had, enjoying but it. it. But they had to... But they, but they had to put but they had to put Buster Rhymes being like just loud just like loud mouth and ridiculous though. It but just, he is it, loud mouth and ridiculous. Have you seen his hair? He, but he but he could he was supposed to be acting act like you're not that jackass. True, but uh, to Mr. Whedon, I want to say, didn't you and I plan a saw watch through years ago and we just never did it? Yeah. yeah well, I'm yeah. in for that as well. Yes, yes, I would love to watch. I would love to watch the movies again, mostly because of uh, Jigsaw, but also partly because of a certain character by the name of Jill Tuck, played by the very attractive Betsy Russell. Mm -hmm. oh, holy shit, man! She, uh, goddamn, <laughs> holy shit! <laughs> it makes his peepee -pee wiggle. <laughs> What can I say? Betsy Russell is hot. She was what an old scene. lady name, though. Well, look, she was hot when she was in the Saw films, okay? <laughs> so I don't know. I... Jill, I mean, Jill Tuck, I mean, that, that, I don't know, man. That, that just seems like a, that seems like an oddly hot name. You know what I'm saying? Ooh, Miss Tuck. You know what I'm saying? It just, it just seems, oh my God. I see, where, I see where you're going with this, and I need you to stop. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. Look, trust me. Trust me. You're never going to find out that she's anybody's freaky aunt, Charles. No worries. Oh no worries, God. babe. No worries, all right? It's all good. She's clean. Did, did somebody say choose your own adventure? I don't have one. <laughs> you should have. Look, we were supposed to be, look, we were supposed to be finishing our humorous goodbye to dark, so you should have had one though. To be honest, I do, you. I do. I'm, I'm, I'm lying when I say I don't. Well, maybe we can, maybe we can review that. You know, say next week then, because we, because we still want to do that. Sounds very good. Okay, that is working. I mean, come on, guys, we're, we're, we're fucking see that. That is an adaptation in its own. We're doing our own goodbye, our own sort of like weird review and an adaptation of dark. I mean, that is that is quite something. That's quite an ad. I mean, we built our we built a we'll, we built a theme for our next show, man. I mean, how fucking awesome is that? You know, I, I I was pretending I didn't have it because of all the haters and and everybody who hates me, and uh, I didn't want to offend you, the audience, you mean that so one I pretended guy? I didn't. Have, yeah, that 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 one bloke and his yeah. forty two friends. <laughs> yeah, man, this is this is quite a time. I mean, now and, and, and like I said, in all fairness. For those for those crit for those critiquers haters that might say hey hey what's with this old you know what I'm saying shit here and you know you're reviewing the fucking Halloween and Saw movies you're like hey man look we we definitely gave a lot to reviewing 
you know, saying new shit that people were fucking talking about. That you know, saying that, that that's definitely that was definitely gaining ground and gaining momentum. So we definitely did that, and we're gonna complete Barry, which is a new shit and just ended. You know what I'm saying? So we, we definitely are giving that balance, but there's just oh, you guys that, didn't finish the Barry today. No, it it was and, and, on, and on this one, it was my fault. <laughs> I was bullshitting, and then I, I was trying to figure out another way to do it, and then I just realized that the only way that I could do it with, with any real fluency was just to add Max onto my fucking YouTube TV and just be done with it. So I just did it. We got to set up the old jelly arm, right? That's what it's called, that that server you recommended, Charles? Jelly, jelly fin. arm? Jelly fin. Yeah. <laughs> I knew it. A fin's an arm. <laughs> yeah. But someone also had jelly arms. Uh, don't don't think we. Don't How hilarious them. is that, though? That you know, looking for a replacement for the Plex. It turns out there's a service essentially called Jelly Arm. You literally. Hey, a, a fin is a fish arm. I said essentially called Jelly Arm. God damn it! Ah. I mean, I mean, it's a, it, 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 it fish is a, it's a fish's arm. Clip that, Damien. It's been a it, it's been a little while for that. You know what I'm saying? Clip that that this that 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 nice that, that was, dynamic. God damn it! It's been a while was, for that. We need a Charles Whedon. God damn it! Compilation. I would love to just go ten years back. By the way, I saw a video of Charles Whedon, Geeks of the Round. Um, uh, me, Charles, and Isaiah, and Charles had curly hair. He had like a Superman S coming down his forehead of like curls. Oh, you actually, you actually looked cute, Charles. I gotta say, Aww. you were a little cutie. <laughs> <laughs> he was like all, he was like all like uh, just, just, just thin. He was a thin young man with not that you're fat or nothing, <laughs> but you were just really. <laughs> You look like you fucked. See this? See this? Yeah. Yeah, you did a, not have that. I have a double chin, so yeah. I'm you fat. did not have that. Yeah. You had a chin. You had like one chin and a jaw, like a square jaw chin, and you had that Superman S. It was like a thick fucking curl S, oh. very thick, coming oh, down the front. So I was Superman. You sure were. You were on Superman. Now I'm fat man. <laughs> now, and. and, and and Jim, I think there should be a countdown. Which one between you and I got the most goddamn inside of him? You know what I'm saying? In our time of doing shows with him. That, that's a hard that's a hard call. <laughs> Cause I think sometimes we got multiples in in within one show. So I I would just love to see which one of us got the most ultimately when it all said and done. Cause cause I think that one hold up, was that one just yours or was that mine? Was this was this goddamn it yours or mine? Sorry, my mic was off. I'll I'll give it to you. Okay. I think it's only fair. Oh, you really? You think? Because you think you got that much more than me? <laughs> Tee hee. <laughs> yeah, pal. I'll, I'll I'll put I'll, I'll put it up. You know what I'm saying? I will definitely put it up. We can do the fucking count. I think I, I think I got. Hold up. Well, you know what? Did you, you think you had a head? How much of a head start did you have on me, though, pal? Mm, three years, two years. Woo. Two year head start. I gotta go through the videos. God. Two year head start. I mean, how many how many goddamn is I'm pretty sure he's got a few in those two years before you know those two years before I came along. Were you goddamning on Geeks of the Round, Charles? That was always there, right? as far as I know, I've been goddamning for as long as I can remember. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure I heard a God damn it even in that. I went back <laughs> to the first Just video work. I had. The first live stream I have on my channel is me, Charles, and Isaiah Mullins. Did wow. I do a God damn it in that live stream? What? Did I do a God damn it in that live stream? God damn it. <laughs> I want to say you did because you certainly seemed curmudgeon -y and Isaiah was there. Isaiah brought the goddamn it out of you. Yes, he did. Which is probably part of the reason why he and I were so good were so good at being friends. 
Oh, I think he would just get mad because he would say, as a heterosexual man, I highly am against this. And you'd be like, oh, God damn it, Isaiah. You are not a heterosexual. You are. I'm just kidding. I never said that to him. <laughs> I know. That was me. I was the jerk who was always telling him he was not a heterosexual. And he was very, he would get very mad at me. He yeah, was a I, sweet I, boy. Yeah, yeah. No, it's just. Uh, no, no. I always got mad at him. Whenever he said more better, I got I got like really annoyed when he would say that. Hey, that's, you never know. That's our guy. Oh, and you never know. Like whenever he said you never know, I was like, but we do know. Can can, can I tell you guys something, Charles? God I'm sorry. Damn it, that you, I do know. Charles, I'm sorry if this brings the goddamn it out of you, and this is a bus throw for you, but. Charles Whedon, Lou Rodriguez, and Isaiah Mullins one time try uh, wanted to do their a version of Tee TV, um, and it was called. Are you ready for this? This is the name they came up with. Oh. Boom City Boys. Fucking god. Damn it. <laughs> What? Boom City Boys. Because every time Isaiah what? would make a point, good, bad, mediocre, yeah. irrelevant, he would go, Boom City or something. Yeah, God <laughs> damn it. God yeah. damn it. Wow, I could see like... the shame washing over him. <laughs> and I can and, and, and I and I can see and I can see the ways I can pervert I can pervert that title. You know what I'm saying? The booty house boys. I can see it all. We we had a name that we were making fun of it with. I can't remember what it was. Thankfully for Whedon. Yeah, I would I would have went right in with Booty House Boys well, real it's quick. The, it's on the internet, so it's out there forever. <laughs> like the time when I twerked in front of a camera. Well, you've done much more than that now, Charles. <laughs> yeah. Please, you, you've done much more than that now. <laughs> just just tell me, was was Boys with an S or a Z? I don't remember. It was with an OIS. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Hold on. I'm getting a Actually, I think it was with an OIS. I think I'm not even joking. I think that's what was what was the funny part about it all. All right. <laughs> OIS is the only answer I would have accepted and it's still <laughs> Well, I, well, Jim, I, I thank you for coming in at this particular point, man. You definitely extended our time at this point, and we are we seem like we're tragically reaching. We're, oh my God, that is great, booty call boys. Oh wow. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Or maybe boo shitty boys, but anyway, no, no. Anyway, no, that's it's fine. Now, now, now. I'm, I'm, I think we may have done that one. The bull shitty boys. I think so. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> he said bull. I thought he said boo, shitty boys. Yeah, that's what I was going for. Boo, shitty that, boys. That is what you yeah. said. Okay. Yeah. Boo, shitty boys. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> Why am I sitting here trying to defend an already shitty name? I don't know. Why are you? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god god well, that, damn it now now that right there thank you jim that is the way we will end this We're, we are glad to have you in with us on these um uh, on these reviews we you will have a lot of material that we're working on thank you for the all or nothing you're welcome but don't tell bloke about that Look, again oh like you said about the all or nothing it, you really get to judge the entire franchise as a whole even with its dirty parts dirty hole. absolutely Absolutely. Yoink, yoink. Well, I certainly thank you, folks, once again for being here. Thank you on behalf of Charles W., the brightest bulb on the spectrum. You know what I'm saying? No ho, Damien. And when we say he no said ho, you're on the spectrum. But when he said, but when he say no hoes, we do mean North Hollywood because Damien do have hoes. You know what I'm saying? So he's definitely no ho Damien. He definitely has hoes. So, so if we were talking about hoes, it would definitely be moho Damien more than no ho Damien. But and then we also have the unseen, the all seen. You know what I'm saying? But the unseen, the unwanted. But he's the desolate one. But don't call him Jack Black. James Grindleton. 
That's right. And I'm sorry that I wasn't here earlier, bloke. I, obviously, we see he shows up. He's like, he pretends. He goes, oh, hey, Jim. But really, he's going, is Jim here? Is Jim here? Oh, Jim's not here. And then he leaves. <laughs> yeah, he wanted us to snipe at you to, because he figured, I guess he figured us sniping at you, you know what I'm saying, would, would, would summon you, would bring you, would bring you on because of the snipes. So... Yes, indeed. But unfortunately, I was asleep. I was up very late last night working on a very top secret and huge project uh, that I can't wait to unleash on the world. I can't wait to announce this to everybody. This one's big, folks. This one's big. That's what she said. Huge. Huge. Boss will be biggest in history. We'll just have to Seriously, see. it's it's such a big thing going on right now, folks, that like... It would just smash every hater who's here all the time. You know, all these haters that, that everyone hates Jim Grindle. And it's like, this is the one bit of news that would be like, oh, yeah? Well, how about this? You can't say nothing now, you jerks. But I can't say nothing now, you jerks. God damn it. I just got to keep taking the abuse from bloke. Fuck you, V. Loves bloke. Jerk. All righty. And on that, folks, we will see you next week. We'll all be here. All four of us will be here. And, well, well, maybe, Jim, but we'll definitely be discussing the rest of Barry. <laughs> well, I got, I got to finish that story with you guys. Okay, so then he'll definitely be here for our humorous goodbye. I got one more thing to say before you guys, before you Please. close out. Please. Boom City Boys! That's all. Boo, <laughs> shitty boys. Boo, fucking Jim. <laughs> Boo, <laughs> shitty boys. <laughs> All righty. No, no, no. Trust me. Trust me. Let me put it to you like this. The guy who's the guy who is here with us right now was never, ever a shitty boy. He was never a shitty boy. If you're talking about Charles Whedon, right? But right, but right now he's not listening. But he's not a city boy either. He's a, you know, say he's his own man. You know, what I'm saying a rugged man. I'm trying to forget that he, part of my podcasting career. Charles is a real man. He does not have a bedtime. All right. <laughs> all right, ladies. <laughs> all right, ladies. So that that so is that, a weird. That is a weird way to explain that I'm an adult. Okay. So that Charles YouTube channel. <laughs> So that Charles YouTube channel should be up 24-7. Mm-mm. Wow. Nothing like some PG-13 fun on the YouTube. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Watch out for that, folks. Watch out for that. And you have a good you have a good afternoon, rest of your day. See ya. Bye-bye, everyone. Peace. Two fingers.